All of my real, I would say, influences were drug dealers. Honestly, like I wanted to be a kingpin. When I got my first paycheck, I called my mom and I almost cried. Before I moved out, I had four properties. Right. So I had three duplexes in a house and I moved into the house. So 2021, 2022, and even this year, I'm worth probably like a million dollars a year. We're here uh, with Antoine J. Dean, AKA YouTuber. <laughs> Thank you, YouTuber. I'm working on it, y'all. No, nah, but you got over 10 million in real estate yeah. in your portfolio. Yeah. You uh, have been in the game for as an agent for what, five years now? Yeah, five, four, five, four, six, four or five years, yeah, five, five, six, six, something five, like six, that. Six, okay, five, six, five years. You got about 10 million in real estate in construction. Yeah. You got like what, 30. So would you say like 30 rental units total so, from so, the five so 15 30, properties? So 38 units, Ooh, right? So okay. I got so basically eight unit apartment building, six unit, five unit, multiple mm -hmm. duplexes, single family houses. Okay. So 38 yeah. people that pay me every month. Okay. So we'll get into that. We'll talk numbers. We're definitely gonna talk numbers. Um, but you know. I like to let everybody introduce themselves how they like to. So welcome back to the DNA Show podcast. If you guys are listening, make sure you guys hit that follow, download, subscribe, whatever the button is. I don't know it on these platforms. I'm still new to this stuff. But <laughs> either way, I know we're having some great conversations. We've been a few weeks in, a couple months now into the podcast, and we're having a good time. So go ahead and introduce yourself how you would like to be seen and known as. So yeah, so I introduce myself. I'm Antoine Dean. A lot of people call me Antoine Jaden because that's my Instagram name, but I'm a real estate entrepreneur. So what that entails is I'm a real estate agent. I'm an investor. So as we mentioned before, you know, decent sized portfolio. Uh, I do, you know, flips, uh, new construction. So all around just entrepreneur, you know, real estate entrepreneur. Is How old what are I like you? to say. Uh, 30. 30. 30. Just turn 30? No, nah, I'll be 31. Like a, you're an old 30. Yeah, I'm an old, oh, old 30. I'm an old 30. <laughs> so he's 30 years old. With over 10 million in real estate. This is gonna be a lot of good stuff for a lot of people, uh, not only our age, but our color as well. Uh, just seeing that it's possible and coming from different type of neighborhoods and environments, which I'm sure you're gonna have a lot to tell us about sure. um, growing up. So I always like to start off, what is the shoe game like as a young, grade school, middle school type, you know, individual. What was it like for you? Was you into kicks? Was you not? Did you have the kicks? Did you not? Like, how'd you afford it? Did your family? Like, let me know how that went. I'll be honest. I had some of the kicks. Okay. I didn't have all of them. So you was like in the mix? Uh, a little bit, a okay. little bit, but it was kind of like, I guess, you know, my mom had me when she was 16. My dad was 17. Okay. So it was kind of like, it wasn't a lot of just money, extra money just for right. hundred $150 right. pair of sneakers, hundred pair of sneakers, and just to have a bunch of them. So I, you know, I got certain ones. Like I got some grail pieces. From so what were those up. like, you know, legendary sneakers to your memory as a young child? So the 13s. The Jordan 13. The the bread 13s with okay. the little bubble. I remember the little hologram. And those came out when we were like little. Yes. Those came out when I was in kindergarten. So you were like just before that or something like that. I, I So I there's a picture that I remember vividly. Like, and I had, I probably was in, I was in, I had to be in like kindergarten, mm -hmm. pre-K kindergarten. So. Yeah, like real young. I yeah, remember we were, super we young. We were young when those came. I think, or oh, actually I might've been in first grade. Either way. Yeah, I know so, so like if you were in first grade and I was in kindergarten, yeah. that sounds perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So good era. This yeah. is the Flints, the, the He Got Games, the, yeah, the so, it's like, it's a lot of good 13s No, for sure. And then I would say the, uh. The fourteens, okay. The white and the candy canes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those are fire. Those, white and red. yeah. And then I don't, I'm trying to think. Wait, what so else? was you a hooper though? Barely, barely. Uh, so, <laughs> so look, I so when did I start hooping? So in the in a and I was like maybe twelve to fifteen. Okay, I was a hooper. So like, you had like NBA dreams. You know, Just you know, if you come from where I come from, you know, you, you think okay. you you think you at least got a little shot at one point in time. I feel it. I feel it. You know, everybody got the hoop dreams. You know, I, I have my hoop dreams. That was my first. <laughs> that was my first thing, but I just never stuck with it. I got distracted. I, I got distracted it. with different things, uh, and then those music. I was, you know, I want to be a. So, what was your what was your life like outside of like sneakers, fashion, all that stuff? But like you said, like your parents were young. What was your like house environment like growing up as a kid, like in grade school? Like, what are some vivid memories that you have, like on the positive and the negative side? Examples that you would like, sure. you know, use as yourself being a parent someday or whatever, maybe. So, I would say growing up, it was one of those things where it's like growing up, I we were, 
I guess I hate throwing away, I hate throwing out the term poor, mm-hmm. but we just, we didn't have much, but I never felt that way. But my mom would tell me that. Like, right. we don't, okay. like, she would tell me that, but I never felt it. So, childhood, I just remember just like playing 007, GoldenEye, oh Nintendo 64. I'm a GOAT at that too. If you ever. Oh, no. I'm a, no, I'm like, no, I might get no, you. No, 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 no. He's I'm, like, I still got it at the crib right no, now. No, I have <laughs> it at the crib right now. Like, put it like this. I'm, I don't, I don't talk myself up in a lot of different things. Right. Monopoly. In 007, okay. I'm a real like I play. I don't know if you play on uh, what is it called? Gold, go. I think it's like gold, like where one shot kills you. It right, doesn't matter right, what right. it is. Like it's certain little things, but I'm I'm up there. Yeah, though, on that. It's like but, hardcore on Call of Duty, it, like same thing. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But I'll say, growing up, everything, everything was. I feel like I had a. I feel like I had a normal childhood. Um, other than the fact that my dad went to jail when mm-hmm. I was super young. So how how old were you when that I was happened? three? Three. Okay. I was three. So you kind do you remember? Or like barely, okay. barely. I don't, not necessarily. No, I would say for the most part, I don't, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. But it's like all of my childhood pictures mm-hmm. are in Sheraton. So if you don't know what Sheraton is, that is a federal penitentiary here in the state of Oregon, and it's in Sheraton, Oregon. Mm-hmm. So like, mm-hmm. if you, if How I was, how far is that drive? Forty five minutes. Probably like an hour yeah, or some something like that, somewhere right? around there. Yeah. It might be forty five. I haven't, yeah. I haven't done that drive in so long. Right. But okay. So you're traveling back and forth, like as a little kid, going to the pen, yeah, coming back, yeah, going to school. Like, are you like talking about this, like with your friends and stuff? Like, how did that go, like with the environment? Because I mean, again, we come up in an environment where like you weren't the only person that might have been in that For scenario, sure. right? So For you sure. might have related with other kids. Um, in that same time and era. Yeah, I had a friend, and this is crazy to think about. I had a friend, and I think it was his uncle mm-hmm. was in jail with my dad. Okay. And so, like, our moms would drive out there together. Right. Makes so, sense. So, to me, like, when I look, at, when I think back on it, it wasn't normal. Mm-hmm. But to me, it was just, this is, I don't know Part anything else. Yeah. Right. And it's kind of like, it wasn't like I was in an environment where, Everybody just had their dads, mm-hmm. so it's not even like I'm in my eyes. I'm not even missing. I'm not right, missing anything. Right, right. So it's like you're like this is what I knew. It's it all wasn't that like I, knew. I had something to like compare it to or whatever. Like it was just a part of your lifestyle for sure. And I remember having friends or like you talk to friends now that mm-hmm. they feel really affected that like oh my dad wasn't there, but right. to me it just was normal. So like I feel like there's certain trauma that people may have that mm-hmm. I don't feel like I have on a conscious level, maybe subconsciously I might be affected in a way that I don't know. And it might come like once you become a parent. Right. Like it might be now you're like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And then like the moment you become a parent or like they're be, when they turn three years old, right. you, you might hit a brick wall and be like, what the hell? Like, why am I feeling this way? Like, nah. who knows? Right. And like, all you can do is prepare yourself for no, those for moments. Sure. But for sure. And I think like I've always, I've one thing I vow to myself just as a person is to be the absolute best father and husband that I could possibly be. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I feel like that's something that I take super, super serious just because like, it's just the simple things. I just want to recreate what I didn't have. Right? right. So like, I didn't see that. Like I look at certain stuff. It would have been dope to have like birthday photos with both of your parents right, or, right. or Christmases or Thanksgiving or just the little different things. So I was like, that's something I've always wanted to recreate for myself. So I just made that vow to myself to be that best the best parent that I can and husband. And you think that's something that kind of like from three years old instilled into you today to be like, I'm about to kill it in real estate. I'm about to kill it in everything I do because I'm going to set up my future for my kids, for all these things, like just kind of subconsciously aligning together. Yeah, I was, I would say so. I maybe, maybe not from three, but like, I think it's subconsciously, it's like, I, wanted my parents to be together because I think that's just a natural thing to mm-hmm. have a, ch- a child to want their parents to be together. Right. So I wanted that. And so I just always thought like if I, when when my time comes, that's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, so yeah, in short, yeah, I guess in short, yes, but yeah, I would say so. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So you're part-time basketball aspiring athlete. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, growing up, just kind of seeing that. Now, where was your relationship with money? You know, starting to understand that, like you said, you like you knew you was loved and all this stuff. But how did you have a relationship with money and finances and stuff, or examples like in that grade school, middle school, or especially in middle school? I feel like in middle school, definitely you start to really notice and understand because you get your own little lunch money, you right. get your own little, right. you know, going out seventh grade trying to take a girl and buy her a little 
little Birkin or something. You know what I'm saying? You buying Birkins, funny. bro? You talk about like you talk about Reese's pieces, <laughs> you talk about some Skittles. Nah, yeah, but remember you used to buy the girls the candies and stuff. So, you know, how how was your relationship with money during those times? So I've always I feel like I've always had a decent relationship with money. Mm-hmm. I was always entrepreneurial, and I think it came from knowing my mom was always super honest with me about like finances and whatever. Mm-hmm. So like knowing that we didn't have much, I never wanted to be a, the burden. Right. So I never used to want to ask my mom for anything, mm-hmm. right? And so I used to always try to carry my own weight. So I guess what that looked like for me was more so, this is like back in burn CD days. Oh so, man, good times. Yeah, so Before like- Before LimeWire. Yeah, yes, <laughs> man. So I used to burn CDs, sell CDs. Yep. Uh, I feel like one of my, like, my best middle school hustle memories- so I I think I dropped my so like I said my second love was rap. Really? So, yeah, that was my second love. Well, I mean, I can't say it's uncommon, but it makes sense why. Yeah, so okay. that was my second love and so I came out with a mixtape in the 7th grade really? and I had two of my friends selling it. I swear like Can we, we get this mixtape? I have it. No, you don't. I swear to God, I no, have you it. You got to drop the tape, bro. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's a friend. So I'm going to say a name. No one's going to know what I'm talking about but him. You know Levi? Uh, Maybe. Levi, he, he's went to Grant. He's the Oh, hoop. yeah, yeah, He yeah. know, like, he legit still knows like, the I'm words. I'm thinking about, like, two different people. No, but. so we were in, I think we were in Phoenix or Cabo. Like, he still knows the words to the song. No like, way. Like, I swear. Like, people had it on their iPods. So it was iPods. a certified banger then. I mean, I was in the seventh grade. I'm probably 12, 13. I'm talking about a Lil bunch Bow of crazy was stuff. Popping. Say it again. Lil Bow Wow was popping. Bro, Chris but I'm Brown not talking. Popping. These is not Lil Bow Wow topics. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> it was real rap raw. <laughs> but I made like $100 in like a week. Okay. But to me, so me, like seventh grade, like that was like, that was dope to me. For sure. You feel me? For so sure. like hand to hand selling CDs, mm-hmm. you know? And so that I used to sell, I used to actually sell shoes. Then I used to really just steal my uncle's shoes, Damn. and I used to sell his shoes. I, okay. When I say steal them, like I might trade him something I had, or he would never used to be a wrestler. So I used, I might, I might steal a couple pairs of shoes. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I might, I might have wore some. I might have sold some. It's like oh, you know, a little devil. Yeah, that. <laughs> and then honestly, so I guess this is me being transparent. Yeah, this is me trying to be transparent with y'all people. Growing up, all of my real. Uh, I would say influences were drug dealers. So For sure. I honestly, I want to be like my dad, mm-hmm. I, you know, like aside from like the gangs and stuff like that, like I just want to be like my dad. Mm-hmm. So like I used to spend all of my summers in Atlanta. So I used to see all of the craziness. Like right. my dad, for whatever reason, the world blessed me with very transparent parents. Mm-hmm. So like I'm seeing my dad do everything. Like Wait. when I say everything, I'm saying everything. So he got out at what time? Did he get out or what? So yeah, he saw my dad. He went to jail when I was three. He got out when I was like eight. And by oh, this time, okay. when so by the time he gets to the gift perspective, yeah, he went to jail when I was three. This took place here in Portland. And then by the time he got out of jail, I was eight. And we lived in Atlanta and he got out in Atlanta. Okay. So when so probably around 10, okay. we moved back. Okay. So then I used to go to Atlanta every summer mm. if he was free. Okay. He's still, he's actually in jail, right? He's in jail oh, right now. Okay. okay, so definitely heavily influenced by the environment for sure. And for sure. I mean, again, you understand why it yeah. makes sense. Like yeah. product, your environment, we get it. Like for sure, you know, those are the type of things. But there had to be a moment where you're like, I need to make a change. I have to switch the narrative. I have to do something different or whatever it is. So what was that moment? Like I know everybody has that moment. There had to be that day where you're like, fuck this. I'm out. Like, I'm doing my own shit. I'm about to turn it up in a different way. So, I, so, in high school, I was, I was relatively good at what I did, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, I was popular for being the kid who sold whatever I sold, mm-hmm. right? And so, I think, so growing up, honestly, like, I wanted to be a kingpin. Like, mm-hmm. I used to watch the documentaries. I used to think, like, how I'm finding my plug and how, I'm, how am I finna, like, right. that was really how I felt. Right. Um, I think where, but I never wanted to adopt the lifestyle because my dad always went to jail for like the lifestyle stuff. Right, it would be right. like the flashy gun shit. charges right. or he went to jail for, you know, whether he, you know, I don't know, did something to somebody that involved weapons or just DUIs getting pulled over, just whatever. Mm-hmm. So I never adopted the lifestyle. And so like 50 Cent was my role model. So like I still never to this day have ever smoked weed. 
Right. So that's why you asked me because I was like, I don't smoke either. Yeah, no, I've never smoked weed yeah. a day, like a day of my life. But did you do a little drink a drink? I drink occasionally. Yeah, I drink like I don't know, once or twice a year, maybe. Yeah, so I'm saying know. occasionally. I'll probably maybe Y'all a handful out, of times. Y'all went a year. out the country, have a couple of drinks. Exactly. Like, something yeah, like that. Something but I'm like not that. just like every weekend. Like I don't even like going out like that. I feel you. So I think to, I guess to come back to your question, the point that things changed for me was I was kind of like, I was trying to hustle to save up enough money to try to start a business. Mm-hmm. So like that's so things I felt that way probably graduating from high school. I think when I graduated, I probably had my first twenty, twenty-five thousand mm-hmm. dollars when I graduated from high school. So my thing is like I'm finna hustle. I'm finna stack up and I'm finna try to start something. Mm-hmm. So I probably ran through forty thousand dollars trying to start various things, and I'm like twenty twenty one. And after I ran through all of my money, the the game that I was in and making my money had shifted. Uh, basically, dispensaries came legal. Right. So that just kind of messed up everything. Right, right, right. And so I was like, I couldn't just make all the money the way that I that I mm-hmm. had before. So I was depressed and. Um, it was one of those things I end up getting a job. I'd never without I would work a job. So I worked a job for 10 months. So mm-hmm. I've only ever worked a legitimate job other than real estate for 10 months. So I was uh uh like checking in people at like a, a health clinic. Oh, okay. Like the front desk. Yeah, front desk. Okay. I did that for 10 months. So okay. like on uh, I'll refer, like if I talk to people, I like I did my 10 months at the county. <laughs> you know, because I saved up for my real estate school, okay, got my credit together. Mm-hmm. And deuces. So and then, okay, okay, okay. Rewind a little bit. Go ahead. We went to high school together. Yeah. We were in the same entrepreneurship class yep. and all this stuff. Yep. Like it's funny how that all went down. Um, and then later we talked about that. Like, oh man, because I don't really know that many other people like in our class that was like on the entrepreneurship side. Yeah. Because it was nah. just like a class, right? Yeah, for sure. But it was funny because we was actually like the ones in there like trying to turn up us. No, stuff. for sure. <laughs> for sure. We, that's like how we had our initial connection when we, because I don't think I had known you until I got to high school. Yeah. I I was, we, we, met in, we met in high school. Yeah, yeah. I sat behind I sat behind you. Yeah. So that all happened. Um, And then, like you said, everything changed. This is, how old are you? 19, 20? When... So I, so I, I would say about 2020, 20, 21 is when okay. things, so my mindset was already on entrepreneurship like, always, I'm money. but say it one more time. You're like, I'm getting money. Like in high school, like I, I used yeah. to, I come to high school, like there's people that could vouch for me. I, I come to high school, 10, I had 10 bands on my yeah, pocket. I remember those days. We used to be so stupid. <laughs> yeah. I come to school okay. with 10 bands. Yeah. Yep. You know, I'd have brought a lot of things in school that probably shouldn't. Right. Brought to school. I know. Okay. So that happened, and then you said everything changed, and you're like, I was depressed. Like, what does that mean to you? So I've experienced, I'll say, different level, different levels of depression at different times. Okay. So this type of depression was like growing up. So you might remember this. You may or may not remember this. Okay. Do you remember Devin? Maybe. He used to wear suits all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So that was my that was my best friend at the time, yeah, right? Yeah. And so like we used to always talk about business or like, I'm gonna be like, we like I'm gonna be richer than you. Like, oh no, I'm gonna be richer. Or right, like right, right. I might pick up, he might pick up a napkin and throw it on the ground, like, oh, I create jobs for people. Like, you wanna go ahead and pick that up? Right. Like we would just make fun of each other. <laughs> right. or if I woke up at five in the morning, I'm like, Oh, you over here, you sleep. I'm up, like I'm working right, right now. What are you doing? And so Long story short, like I was always on the business tip. I always wanted to do business. And I guess it came from, so I have cousins in Atlanta Mm -hmm. that made a lot of money hustling, Mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of money and like they have music videos. Like I show you my cousin in music videos with Bun B and Lil Boozy like way back then. So like if I was, if I were, if you were my friend, I told you this in high school or in middle school, you wouldn't have believed me because it's like. We're from Portland, like you don't believe you don't you. Yeah, but if you're yeah, my yeah. friend, like my dad got pictures with Jeezy in 06. Right. So this is like prime Jeezy. Right. So like that's where a lot of my influences came from. But long story short, I've literally seen them have everything, lose it all, and go to jail. Right. And they'd be like, I don't want to be that. I don't want to do. I don't right. want to do that. Like right. so, I, I used to always think like, why don't they invest in something or start this or start mm-hmm. that? So like, I kind of got that the business wanted to know the business side from seeing them do it away. And mess up, and mm-hmm. then me like I'm not gonna do the same thing. Right. So that's really where it came from. So that came, and then but when you say like in that depression though, also like, oh yeah, well, I forgot. I missed, no, no, the, I missed the whole depression. How did how did you like feel in those moments? Like what did you actually go through? Like when you were at home by yourself in your room, like Sick. what were those moments like? So for me, the sickness was like okay. So think about this. Think about being 
18 years old, mm -hmm. right? You're 18 years old. You got 20, you got 20 racks, right? Mm -hmm. And like, you know, you got a cool car, you got whatever, you got all of the little stuff that you would want, and you kind of see your vision, right? right? So imagine running up 30,000, 40,000, right? And you think like, okay, I'm gonna cross over and do something. Mm -hmm. You lose all of your money trying to start different things. Right. And it's like you you have, you feel like you have so much to give, but you can't give it. Right. And so it's like you think about like, damn, I was having more money at 18 than I was at 20 right. or 21 or whatever, the, whatever the, how old I was. It's like just feeling like, how am I going to be successful? Like, how am I going to come out of this situation? Mm -hmm. Right. When I feel like I had a path and it didn't pan out. Mm -hmm. Like, so the depression was more just like feeling like, lost mm -hmm. like no not no real guidance not knowing where to go not knowing what to do but knowing that you were like if you knew what to do you mm -hmm. would give whatever you could to be successful so like when you you would question yourself i'm assuming for sure and like how what would you question yourself like what would you be saying like in those scenarios like what can i do what am i like why am i not what like what is it what are those the questions is the uh, you know you maybe you might be able to put this on there mm -hmm. uh, when Big Sean said uh, how to be a millionaire I used to Google it or something like mm -hmm. you remember that bar mm -hmm. just just trying to figure out like how to be successful mm -hmm. literally I think the I put the, a lot of pressure on myself of like I told I feel like I told myself in high school I want to be a millionaire by like. 25 me too 24. same thing i was like i'll be a millionaire by 25 yeah no that's so that was my thing yeah. so there's a i feel like there was a lot of pressure on myself to perform mm -hmm. just because i knew that i was intelligent and i just i just was wanted to figure it out so bad mm -hmm. and it's just like trying to figure something out and not knowing what to do but knowing that you have the worth ethic it's like imagine like i guess this is the best way i could put it this is may not make sense but think about like Kobe Bryant, when he's in his last season, knowing that he has this dog in him, he's right. willing to put in everything that he can, right. but just physically because of age and right. whatever, like all just, interest, he just same. can't do it. Right. It's just like feeling like trapped. Right. I, guess, I guess that's the best way that I could, okay. I could try to sum it up into words. So coming out of that, like that's when you're like, I need to get a job and like reset or like what was the kind of... So mindset behind even like I'm gonna get a job. So I think it was what it was is like I always wanted to do. I've always like I've always liked real estate. So mm -hmm. like growing up, I, it was one of those things that I've always had interest in. So like even if I was gonna do a business, like I was always gonna invest in real estate. Okay. And so I guess from trying to start whatever I was trying to start, I what I realized is that people, even when I like uh was you know doing whatever I was doing before people. Like I, I'm decent at building relationships, mm -hmm. right? And just making connections with people. And I realized like when I get in front of people, if I'm talking about whatever it is, like people are receptive to me. Mm -hmm. So when I thought about like, okay, like I could be a real estate agent mm -hmm. because like a lot of the times when you're selling a product, sometimes depending on what's available, the product might not be the greatest, right? right? But I know that anything that I personally like put my name on, I will give everything I can to deliver on that. Right. So I know that if I'm providing a service, which let's say is the product, I know that I'm going to do everything in my power to make that be the best that it can. So mm -hmm. when I thought about being a real estate agent, it's like, okay, I think since people are receptive to me, I can, I think I should be able to, you know, be able to, I guess, to like network and learn real estate from the inside out to then become, you know, a great investor, a developer, and mm -hmm. all of that. Okay, so while you were in this job for the 10 months, you were just like studying your ass off. Yeah, for stuff. sure. So I, I remember there would be sometimes like, damn, you you might have, no, I think you actually became an agent at that point. Because I remember you would be like printing out contracts and stuff and just like reading them. Yeah. And like doing stuff. Yeah. And we'd be like at the party and you'd be like over there in the corner. Yeah. Like I'm physically here, but yeah. I'm mentally here. Yeah. So I, so I, so yeah, it, what, my mindset when I was at the job is I'm going like literally day one, like I am work getting my real estate license, like I'm working on my credit. So like I had like collect I had collections like just like some just like stupid stuff, mm -hmm. right? So like for example, I had like something had happened to me where I had like just like some health stuff, nothing super crazy. Mm -hmm. But my mom told me we had medical, but I guess we didn't have medical, mm -hmm. and like I had medical bills and collections. And it was just like, I just never even, you didn't even know. I wasn't even, no, I didn't even know. Right. And like, I sold a car in high school 
and some it got towed, and it got like in, it got on to- you. So they never transferred. They the never title. transferred. The title. I right. didn't even know that I was supposed to go get it. Or I was the only person that could get it. I'm like, right. oh, like I sold the car to him because I would have go picked it up for two hundred bucks and sold it again. Right. Right. But like I just didn't. I don't know. So it's like little stuff. So like I literally saved up money, got everything out of my collections. Like there was a, a necklace I had at the time that I used to always wear, and it was like you know a gold necklace. I like legit pondered that to get my credit together, mm. and it was like that was like a, a hard. I was like it was at the time it was like a hard thing to do mm. because it's like. Just because you're doing that doesn't mean you're gonna be like does it like you could have sold it and still messed up your credit again or not be doesn't right, mean you're right. gonna become anything. Right. So I just was working, getting my credit together, got credit card, like my first credit cards, um, put my like purchased a real estate school. And so like I completed my real estate, like I remember the dates. I got I paid to for the program mm-hmm. December 14th. Or no, December nineteenth, twenty fourteen. Okay, and I finished it January twenty second, two thousand fifteen. Okay, so, so I got it. There. Like I, I went to the school in a month. Right, it'd be taking people. I know people like oh, like it took them six months. And right, right, four right, months. Right. Like I legit oh, I failed my test. I got to do it again. Yes, and I had yeah. a full time job. So you just was like, I'm committed to this. Yeah, and I'm locked in. No distractions, no distractions. and I'm getting my shit done. Yeah, like. So, I don't have time to be wasting. No, because I was at the because I already felt like I was losing time. Even though right. I was 22 mm-hmm. when I got my license, I felt like I was losing time because it's like if I because I truly and I maybe I'm crazy, I don't know, but I truly believe that I could be a millionaire by the time I was 25. Mm-hmm. So it's like I felt like I know that this job is not gonna get me to anywhere near to what I want to be. Okay, so you get the license. Yeah. And now you have to. How long were you working before you're like, I'm quitting this job? Uh, I think I did six months. After six more months. Okay. Yeah. So how was your first year being a real estate agent? Because you know a lot of people say like first year is rough. It's trash. Uh, you got to build trash. it up. Like it's trash. Explain how your first year went. Oh yeah, and where'd you go for the real estate school as well? So I did online, mm-hmm. online ed, and so literally when I got it, I was like I said, I was working a full time job. Mm-hmm. I would since I was checking people in. If it was slow. Oh, we got two monitors. Yep. I'm doing my real estate thing right here, but everyone at the front desk, they know that I'm doing every like no one care. They don't really care. Like I'm so slow. I'm doing my real estate license. Right. And I wake up, I wake up, work on it at work, work on it. And then I would leave. It used to be a coffee shop called uh Southeast Grind. It was a 24 okay. hour coffee shop. Okay. I used to go there for like two, three hours. Cause like I like my life depended on me getting my real estate license. Cause I knew like this job is not like I was making like I when I got my first paycheck, I called my mom and I almost cried. From real estate? No, from the job. From the job. Yes, I almost cried. Why? Bro, taxes, bro. Oh, like how much they took for bro, me. Bro, I thought something was wrong. I legitimately thought something was wrong. Damn. Like, cause I I'm I'm never I'm hand to hand. I'm not Straight paying cash, taxes. Homie. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel and so it. it's like I'm making I've made more money than this. In high school. Way less time. Way, way less, less effort, time. I'm right. chilling. Mm-hmm. And so it was sick, but it helped. I think looking back on it, it helped me understand the value of a dollar. Right. Really knowing what a dollar is. Right. And like what taxes is and like what, what people are talking about when they talk. And I mind you, my checks are probably 1400 every two weeks, 1500 every two weeks. Mm-hmm. It's not nothing crazy, but you get 1500 and they take out taxes and it's 11. I'm sick, bro. Like, bro, what am I going to do? Bro, with this? I, there's days in high school I made. You know, like it would maybe it wasn't like like gross, right? But right, I didn't right. made a thousand dollars in a oh, day yeah. before. So wait, so where were you living during this time when you were working a job and everything? I was living at home. So you're still at living home. at home. I was still living at home. One huge bonus right there. No, for sure. Because a lot of people still have overhead with just living expenses. No, for sure. And that is like a huge, huge thing. And that was intentional too, though. Yeah. Cause because I think, and I guess I'm I'm speaking to you young people right now who are trying to figure it out, like. Don't rush to move out. And the reason why I say that is because if you rush and move out and you're working a low, if you have a low earning job, you're literally just working to maintain what you have. And then if you want to buy a car, you got rent $1,500, your car note $300, you're making $1,800. And insurance. then you still got food, you got car insurance, you got gas, you're Bomb. trying to live a little bit. Yeah. like. It's, I literally, I didn't move out until I was 28, but we'll get to that part. We'll get to hey, that later. I didn't move out until later either. I was like doing the same thing. I'm like, I'm on that same notion. Even when I bought the first house, I was renting it out. I was like, don't go into my room 
But I still had stayed at my parents' house for like four more months before I even decided to move in. Cause I was really like kind of in no rush. Like, right. I'm here for the money for that, but I'm really no. not trying to be moving out so, like that. Before I moved out, I had four properties. Right. So I had three duplexes in a house and I moved into the house. I love it. But so it's like, I wasn't like, I, I probably had. Today's partner is shopdnashow.com. Are you tired of wearing low quality gear? I completely understand. I made a personal mission to go out and find higher quality stuff and give it to you guys at an affordable price. And not only because of that, I have to wear this stuff every day and I don't wanna be wearing cheap clothing all the time. So I wanna make sure that you guys know about it and are understanding that we have a lot of cool stuff coming out as well. Hit the link down below or pinned or wherever it may be. It's gonna be shopdnashow.com. There's new drops every single month. I'm excited to see you guys in the gear. And now let's go ahead and get back to the podcast. I'm super transparent. I probably had a quarter million dollars before I moved out and was still nervous about paying a mortgage. <laughs> right. that's, they're like, that's, that's tell you everything about my mindset right there. Like yeah. I had, like I could have paid my mortgage for three years, yeah. but like I still didn't want to take on that payment. And my mortgage, I got a great, I'm an investor, y'all, so I got a great deal. But my mortgage was like thirteen hundred bucks. Oh yeah, and so that's nothing, right? Like at all. So it's like eight. That's like it's like under eighteen thousand dollars a year, and mm -hmm. I have I could pay my mortgage for ten years, and was like nah tripping, <laughs> you know. But it's just like, I but that's what, but that's the things though that literally help you scale faster, grow faster, get farther, do all those different things. Sure. Cause it allowed me to take a lot of risk. Yeah. Cause it's like, I used to, cause so at this point when I'm, before I moved out or whatever, I had four properties, I'm living in my grandma's basement mm -hmm. and it was a, it was a cool basement, but I'm in nonetheless, I'm in a basement. So I used to always tell myself like I could take certain risks because how much worse is it going to get than mm -hmm. this? Like if I lost everything tomorrow, are they gonna dig another level in my grandma's basement? I'm gonna go below that. Right, right. Like right. it's not. Yeah, no. You don't I mean, have nothing like, to lose. Like, I got another house, but I'm still staying at my grandma's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but imagine. So this is what you gotta think. Imagine dating and talking to girls and that being the situation. Hey. I got cribs. I got cribs when I'm at the crib. <laughs> I'm, at the crib. I'm down in the baby crib. All right. <laughs> okay. So, but before that though, we gotta we gotta step back just a little bit again. Because a lot of people was like, oh, you have four properties, had this much money, da, 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 right? So how did you get the first property? How did you go about it? Because again, there's so many different ways to get different loans, whatever right, it may right. be. Like, take us through that step by step because people are still trying to get their first property. Right. And they want to have four. They want to have 10. They want to have 20. But yeah. like, I don't want to jump too far ahead before we right. get there. For sure. So first property I bought. So uh, as, as you know, or a lot of people know, in order to get like, a conventional loan or normal loan, you have to have work for two years, mm -hmm. right? So you have two years of tax returns. So that's the second that I got my two years of tax returns, I got pre-approved and maybe within a week, I, I saw a duplex. So you, you used your tax returns from your real estate agent yeah, money? For, yeah, that was okay. my, you need okay. two, yeah, two years of income. So how, how long are you agent for two years? Two, like immediately? Well, it, was, like it was, so I got licensed in 15 like, I don't really count 15 because it's like I worked a job half of 15. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of, and I quit then, but it was still like a transitional okay. period. So, like, my first real full year, I say, was 2016. So, like, 2016, 2017. Exactly. So, I used, so I bought something at the top of 18. Okay. So, that's my first purchase, okay. duplex. Before that, I put myself in a first time home buyers program. Mm -hmm. And so, long story short, the down payment for my first crib was 12000 Mm hmm. And but the program I had put probably like three thousand into it for the duplex for the duplex mm -hmm. I put three thousand into it and they matched me like nine mm -hmm. right so my down payment money was already covered okay so I negotiated that the that the sellers pay my closing costs okay so clutch. like just just so you know just to give you perspective when you buy a property the two main expenses you have is a down payment and your earnest money earnest money is your closing cost and like that's how the lender gets paid and like just it's just google closing costs you'll you'll get it it's not it's not hard but basically um I negotiated that they pay my closing costs, so then mm -hmm. I represented myself. Mm -hmm. I was my own agent. Right. So I made a which commission. Which is very convenient. Right. Which is basically giving your money yeah, back. Yeah, so I, I made a commission. So I once you factor out my commission, mm -hmm. right? Like if you factor in my commission, I, I don't remember how much it was. It was three forty five, two and a half percent. It might have been like eight grand or something okay. like that. So I made five like if you I made five thousand buying it and mm -hmm. then when you purchase properties, a lot of times your 
it skips a, a mortgage payment. So mm-hmm. like if you buy something in January, oh, the first month you're saying your like, first yeah. payment might not be until March right. or depending on like when you close. Right. Yeah. So I like then I got to pocket those two months of rent. Mm-hmm. So in my head, I made like nine thousand buying it. Mm. So I was like, I didn't okay. have to come up with So you you had to have money. Technically, you had yes. to have money to make it happen. Yes. But at the end of it all, the way it all penciled out, yeah. you ended up making money buying your house. Yeah. So basically, all the money that I came up with initially was the three thousand dollars that I put in this program, mm-hmm. and then they matched me with nine. Mm-hmm. So I had twelve. That was my down payment. I negotiated that they pay my closing costs. Mm-hmm. So I was into it for three grand. By the time I make my commission, I'm ahead five. Mm-hmm. By the time my tenants pay me rent, and then I don't have nothing that next month. Those free months. That's you know. So that's right. you know. That's a free month. I don't remember what it was. Let's call it two bands. Mm-hmm. Right. So. I'm up by the time right. I buy my first property. I like it. I like it. So you you get in and you're already on a good start yep. when it comes to the first property. Have you ever, have you sold any of your like original properties that you had? I have. I have. Okay. This first time, first time this year, I sold two properties. Ah, okay. So I'm sure it's for a reason. We'll get into that in a minute. So, okay. So you get the first property. Yep. And now how long until the second one? Six months. Six months. Okay. Yep. So how do you go about it? Uh, getting another property six months later? I gotta say first, shout out, shout out my partner Brett. So we weren't partners at this time. Okay. But it was this deal that I was on Craigslist. He's like, I think this guy will do seller's financing. We're not really interested in it. And so it's this ugly duplex. What okay, and also explain to them what seller financing okay. is. Okay. So uh, was this was this your like first introduction to seller financing yes. or what? Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, explain to them what it is. Okay, so, so seller's finance. So traditionally when you buy a property, the bank lends you money and then you're paying the bank. Seller's financing is when you say, Hey, um, I will pay you a down payment of I paid him basically twenty thousand dollars and took over his mortgage, is pretty much what it was. The but homeowner. That's, the homeowners, right? So that's a way of it, but typically the, the the typical way of seller's financing is essentially someone, let's say someone owns a house free and clear and it's worth $100,000. You give them $20,000 and you make payments to them every month and then you come up with a time frame where you would refinance it and then they will get all of their money back. So essentially they're being the seller and they're being the bank. So that's what they call seller's financing. And then you'll hear them say like, Two years with a balloon payment exactly. or whatever it may be. Exactly. Yep. So so it was that. So basically a guy, there was this duplex. It was a beat up duplex. And it was like not in the greatest area. Mm-hmm. Like it was a dog. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I called. So he wanted $20,000 down. Mm-hmm. And the, one of the units needed to be remodeled. And it was like $20,000. Okay. He needed like $20,000. So he's like, work. I need forty just for 40. this. I need forty. Yeah. So I call, I call... Um, like uh, I call him like a real estate mentor of mine. Mm-hmm. I, like, can I borrow forty thousand? Mm-hmm. Mind you, just a couple months prior, I saw something. It was the first time I ever asked to borrow money for this type of thing. Right. And so he believed in me. He's the first person that ever lent me money. He lent me forty. Mm-hmm. And so, um, essentially, like I was nervous. Like this was a an easy remodel. But, but it's I'm just like, it's this not is my big. Money. Right. This is big right. because this is not my money. Right. I'm doing the seller's finance thing. Like, this could all just blow up in my face. Right. Right. But what made me want to buy the duplex in general, it had a huge lot. Okay. Right. And so it ended up having like in what it was zoned, the zoning was changing at the time. So I'm like, oh, you could be able to in the future, you'll be able to build this on here. Like something huge. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm like, this will be cool for the future. So like my first vlog, which I haven't even mentioned, I'm not a, I try to be a YouTuber, but I'm not a real YouTuber. Uh, if my first vlog was me buying my home inspection for this. Okay. And so, long story short, I uh, I I do the I do the deal. I borrow the money, and then two years later, I refinance it and pay him back. So okay, so two years later, you yep. refinance it. So now, when you go to refinance it. Who are you using for refinancing? Uh, is it based off of like the equity that you got in it now and all the other stuff? Yeah, like- yeah. So basically, so basically, at that point, I just go to like a traditional, just like a traditional bank, mm-hmm. right? So all, a local bank here, a big local bank is on point. I mm-hmm. go to on point. Yep. And then I, uh, I, uh, I just refinance it. So I put forty thousand dollars into it. So I end up putting an extra twenty into it over time, okay. over the two years. I bought it for two ninety. Ended up appraising for like four twenty five. Okay. So, okay. 
And then he gets his money back. Everybody gets that money back. Everything's so, and, over. And you right told now. him, like, it's going to be a two-year play. Like, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so he was I, so good. I, everything's straight. Yeah, everything's straight. You're not, straight. like, pressed about that yeah. or nothing. I got my first uh, lawsuit there, too. Tenants tried to sue me. Really? Yeah. I can't. I there was a, It was settled, so I legally can't speak about it. Uh, but there was, a, there was a settlement. It was a money grab. And it just was, like, rookie landlord stuff. Like, just Like you being stuff. a rookie. Yeah, just super uh, stuff. It wasn't, but it wasn't even, like... Like the the situation was, I was building a tiny house on the back of it, mm-hmm. and it's one of those things where it's like, oh, you didn't give proper notice. Mm. But it's like, it was just like some BS, just some corny stuff. Some, some was corny like, stuff. Oh, we know the loophole. Let's try to hit the leak. Right. So right. it was like, okay. I got something in the mail one day. Like, we need you to pay fifty thousand in like ninety days. I'm sick. <laughs> I'm so sick. I'm super sick. But it we end up settling. It ended up costing. A fraction of it. Yeah. And it wasn't nothing serious, but it was like, it had me ready to be like, I'm done with this. Right. Thing. Like, they I'm still done. Got me. Like, I'm done. And this is on your second property. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So, second property, yeah. knocked down. It's another duplex. Another duplex. Two duplexes. Yeah. Okay. Still staying in grandma's basement. Yeah. Okay. Third property. Another duplex. Three duplexes. Three duplexes. Same scenario? Same scenario. No, no. So, this is a traditional buy. Traditional? This is on the market. So, for financing for that, you just right. use regular income from property yeah, sales. That exactly. You have so from I, your job. properties that I sell thirty thousand okay. down, uh, and so and so this was a so this is around the time. So prior to this, I had a Mercedes, mm-hmm. right? I had there wasn't nothing crazy, little mm-hmm. Mercedes, whatever. I made a vlog of me taking back my Mercedes because mm-hmm. when you buy properties, you get to this thing where it's, it's something called debt to income ratio, where essentially, again, this is one of those things you can Google, but essentially, what it is is that. You make a certain amount of money, you have a certain amount of debt. So mm-hmm. I have these multiple mortgages that are showing up. And so it's like, even though that I have renters in there and they're paying for it, the bank looks at can look at things differently at times. So the easiest debt that I could get rid of was selling my Mercedes. I sold it back to the dealership right. and lost 2000 and went back to a Toyota Camry. And I didn't. And the thing is, I made a vlog about it because that's how much I didn't really care. Like, I never was a super material. But it was like guy. the same thing of like selling your chain back yes, in the no. day. And so I, it's crazy you brought up that reference because I thought about that at that time. Mm-hmm. Like, had I not did that then, I maybe have not even been in the position to take this back. But it's like my thought process was like, I bought the duplex for three fifteen. Uh, it's probably worth five twenty five, mm-hmm. five fifty now. So mm-hmm. it's like. That car would have been worth ten thousand right, now, right. and this and this is worth damn near double. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like one of those things. Is like it's to me, it's a no brainer. But I think people get so get so caught up in ego. And I gotta look this way. I gotta be presented right, this right. way. But it's like when you know, if you know, you know. Like you that, know. well, I was in the same scenario. Like when I was going to get my first house, and I bought the second one. It was like, bro, I got all these shoes. Like I could sell these, take the cash, get a hard money lender. Go yeah. get the second property yeah. and make it all happen. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't want to because I worked so hard. I had so many stories and memories. But I was like, man, it's not going to hurt me to sell a few hundred pairs of shoes. Like, I got like seven, eight hundred pairs of shoes. Damn, that's like, crazy. it's not going to be that bad, you know? Wait, hold on. Everybody, can I get a pair of shoes, bro? <laughs> Let me get a couple pairs. I know you, you got some 10 you and fly. a half, bro. <laughs> I'm a 13, big homie. No, nah, you got some. Bro, he's. I don't sell shoes no more. <laughs> bro, you're a shoe hoarder, bro. You I'm have some. Size 13. You got some 10s in the stock <laughs> for me, bro. No 10s, bro. If he was a size nine, I have some crazy samples, but I'm a size a whole, nine. That's a whole nother story. I'm a size nine. I'm gonna need some and racks. Some, y'all need to drop. Can y'all please in the comments below tell him to give me some shoes, man? I need some shoes. Look. Everybody in the comments gonna be asking for the shoes. Hey, for ask him. Yeah, listen. They go. They want order for themselves. No, nah, tell him to just give me some shoes. I need some of those thirteens that meant so much to me growing up, man. Oh. You didn't just give me a pair of those. No, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. just, I'll just, okay. Okay. No, I'll just talk here. When they <laughs> no. released last time, one of the last times they released, I bought like three pair of them. Oh, you did? Yeah. That's I ended up selling them, though, but that's no, I'm done. Thing. Hard time, bro. I just told you. I was depressed, bro. I Shut lost up. all my money, bro. <laughs> it was gone. But yeah, no, I know what you mean, though, like on, um, you know, getting rid of stuff and like making that sacrifice. Definitely, because like even sneakers, like it's a status symbol thing. I get that. Like, but like, bro, I sold them shoes took the money and like multiplied it by so much. I'm like, right. I would have never got that. Like if I would have just kept it no, or whatever. For sure. like, yeah. I would have sure. made a little bit of money, but not the same. Right. And I think, I think that's what, like what I've had to realize even for me and becoming successful, they always say like, you have to do what others aren't willing to do right. 
to be able to do what others can't do or won't you do what they won't do and so you can do what they can't do right, right? so it's like like I think we're both in our own rights at that point yeah. so where there's a lot of things that we can do like you can do whether it's with shoes and like with your channel all mm -hmm. of that because you stayed down you made the sacrifices mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things that I can do in real estate that a lot of people can't do even if they've been in business longer than me because there are certain sacrifices that right. we both made up front that paid off that it's like we just receiving the dividends from right. that in the short term we're super uncomfortable and we didn't want to do them but it propelled us and it really made us that much better entrepreneurs and business people because we understand what it takes to be able to sacrifice something right. in order to uh, to get ahead. But you said it earlier too, like you had to check your ego. No, for sure. That was like the biggest thing. Yeah. I think that's the hugest hurdle. Oh, well, I don't know for everybody, but I feel like the vast majority of people, the ego is the hugest hurdle for a lot of people to take yeah. that next step to get over it because what? They don't want to see, they don't want to... Uh, how people see you fail or take you took a step back you yeah. was driving a Benz now you got a Camry right. da, 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 like all that stuff like and you're like nah nah it's good yeah no I'm I, doing it now so yeah. I can get here no, and then later sure. you're gonna be like damn you driving that Bentley you should have put some different rims on it yeah, like you for know sure. how that go no 100% and so I think what it is is what you have to realize too is like in business it's no ego mm -hmm. it's, it's it's there's no ego right, right. it's like you do transactions with people because it's a value exchange, right? Mm -hmm. You sell somebody some shoes, they have the money, you have the shoes, it's an exchange, right? Yep. So there's no ego, like, you don't care, you know, you don't care who this person is or what it is, they're who their mom or their dad is. It's like, do you have the money for the shoes or do you not have the money for the shoes, right? right? All of the ego stuff goes out the window. So it's like, in business, it's like, you have to be able to provide a value and or service to someone mm -hmm. to the best of your ability, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I guess at this point I provide housing and it's like, if I want to be able to, to provide housing or benefit from per, to be able to provide housing, I, if I have to sell a car to be able to buy a piece of property, that's going to appreciate and give me money every single month. Mm -hmm. I don't give a damn about that car, man. See, he going to have me selling my whole collection no, at the end of this podcast. No, don't, don't, don't sell the collection, bro. <laughs> if, if you do, no, bro, just I'm say actually, what shoe, shoe, pair of shoe for me. <laughs> 13. I am actually uh, thinking about downsizing a little bit. I'm in a I'm in the middle of like a weird position right now because I actually want to get a I want to buy a bigger house right. and have like a big ass shoe room yeah and like have it be like crazy and just go like thousand pairs like just fire just like crazy See? like but then I'm also like bro do I need to do this whatever and it's not about like status or any of that stuff I just love this shit like I've oh, been doing sure. shoes for so long like. I always loved like having a fire collection, being able to pick whatever I wanted, being thankful for all the things that I've been. It's so dope. Like sometimes I walk into my office in here and I'm like, bro, I remember my 16 year old self, like dreaming to be here. Right. And I'm in here living it right now. Right. And like, it's just so like, it's so dope to be in that. For and sure. it's like, it makes you want to like go harder, build the collection more. Like, and I give away a lot of shoes. I do all that stuff, but to people in need. Right. <laughs> to people that truly need nah, the stuff. For sure, for sure. But um, I'm in like an interesting place right now. Like I'll be some days I'm like, what's my collection worth? What could I sell? What should I do? Ooh, I could dump like a hundred pairs. I could do this. Ooh, I, and then other days I'm like, nah, nah, I gotta like, I mean, I worked hard for these or like, I nah, got a good story for this. Like, so it's like a. I feel, so I can relate to that because, so my vanity sheet, mm -hmm. like you can walk in this room and you can see all of these shoes, mm -hmm. right? I got an Excel sheet right. that has all of the properties that right. I own, how much equity I got in them, all of that. And I look at that bottom number and it's like, how you be like, how much like, right. I, and I'll go in there. Like if I feel like the market is down a little bit, I'll adjust the numbers down or if it's, yeah, 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 I'll adjust yeah, yeah. It, you know, make my little adjustments. <laughs> like that's my, it's called a SREO. It's a, it's called a, a schedule of real estate owned. The banks ask for it. So I like, that's my vanity sheet. I mm -hmm. look at it. I'm like, damn, okay, I'm worth this. Like, how can I get this up to this number right, or this right, number right, or this right. number? Or should I sell this to buy this? Or yeah. Sometimes I'll be just, because with real estate, it's super cash intensive. So mm -hmm. it's like, you could be worth millions and not have that much Barely money at cash. times. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's other times that you can have five, six hundred thousand and you you find a new project and it's gone. That's, there, there you go. You right. found a place for it. Yep. You know, so it's one of those things like, I'd be like, damn, should I liquidate this or is the market finna do this? So should I sell this right. so I can have this? Mm -hmm. But then it would be like, I look at the taxes on it. Like, if you like, there's a property I was looking at. If I sold it for, I sold it, I could make 250, right? Mm -hmm. Taxes would be like 70,000. Damn. Like, is that worth even? Yeah. 
Oh, I almost have one eighty. Right. They didn't I even. They didn't even lend me the money to buy it. I thought two fifty was a threshold. Oh, if it's only if it's your primary residence, though, huh? That's yep. Yeah, I'm yeah that's right. Investment. Yeah, because yeah. this would be investment. Yeah. Property. So this okay. is like you got twenty percent capital gains, right? Nine right, percent right. state excise tax, all these other taxes, corporate. Corporate, if, if you do over a million dollars a year in revenue, okay, not not grow like gross numbers. Uh-huh. There's a corporate activity tax, and Jeez. it's like one percent on every million. After like whatever, so it's like since I literally do new construction, right? Where I'll sell a house. If you sell two houses for five hundred thousand, there's a million. But you do that four times, right? That's four million. That's four. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, bro. It's just be so. It's it so just much. Be adding up. But it's okay. like, you know, real estate. If you sell it a certain way, you you can, you know, you can. Uh, what is the proper word? Not. It's not not pay taxes. You can defer the taxes. Right. Right. Yeah. So one thing that you I feel like pride yourself in also is like learning about zoning. Oh yeah. That's like yeah. your thing. Yeah. So like, explain to them zoning, and then also tell them like why it's so important to you right. and what you've learned like f- from it the most. So so basically uh, in real estate, when you buy a piece of property, everything, every property has a, is zoned for something, right? So if you, that's like, think about this. You drive down the street, you're in a neighborhood, it's all houses. Generally it's zoned for single family houses. You drive down a busy street, it's all buildings. Usually that's zoned commercial, right? Mm-hmm. And so there's zonings in between that. So essentially zoning is what the jurisdiction, the city allows you to build in on a specific parcel. And so basically, since I do a, a lot of new construction, I, in, in the city that I'm in, I know the zoning code like the back of my hand. And if I don't know something, I know who to ask to get the answer in- instantly. And so to answer his question of why zoning is so important to me is because I'm like the lot split. I don't say master. That's steep. But like I'm a lot split guy. So like a lot often. of the times. He said, I said, you do it often. <laughs> yeah, I do it. I do it often. So basically, our real estate prices are, are high here. So if I can find a piece of property that's on something I can split, if you can buy the initial property right, that land is dang near free. It's like you could sell it, make a hundred thousand, or you could leverage it to build on it and not have to put up any any money because you could use the equity in the land uh for the construction loan. And it just it just opens up your whole arsenal. So and it's a lot of things, a lot of times it's that thing that everyone just doesn't inherently know right off the top. Mm-hmm. Everyone just doesn't know zoning. So when I see something you know, if it's if I, I can fix it up and split a lot off of it, I'll I'll probably buy it. So no scenarios for you guys to like kind of visualize or anything. He's talking about like a property that's like, oh damn, this is a good sized piece of land yep. in a neighborhood or whatever. Yeah. And and there's a the house is like pushed back to the back of the property so he could split it and run it like I'll cut it in half or take a you know the front half of the property. And then we'll sell that or use it as equity or vice versa. Like the house, sometimes you guys see houses like close to the curb and then there's like a big ass backyard. That's where you can go to take yeah. the money and like, let's split this. Let's cut that backyard in half yeah. and then let's turn it into a whole nother lot of land. Yeah. And then sure. that's just literally kind of like, I don't know if it's like, I wouldn't say printing money, but it's like create new opportunities with the land to no, give you sure. more money. For sure. It's, it's one of those things. Like I said, people don't, Look, people don't necessarily like not everyone looks for it mm-hmm. or can knows it well enough to be able to act fast as I can on mm-hmm. something. So opportunity could pop up. You might not you might need three or four days to figure it out, run it by this person, run it by this person. Mm-hmm. And the moment I see it, I already know what can be done. And I might have to figure out a detail or two, but by the time you've tried to figure it out, I already got it under contract. Right. So we locked in. Yeah, we locked in. Okay. So we went from the third duplex right. to like a little bit farther ahead. Right. Uh, everybody like they get into real estate and then they're like, I want to scale. I want to grow. You know, like you and me, we always talk about you be like, bro, yeah. pay the taxes, do the thing. I'm yeah. like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me, I'm like, I'll just do cash. <laughs> I'll figure it out. <laughs> so, but with that, like for me, like I got to pay a higher rate or whatever it may be. Um, what was your thing for scaling you would say because you said how many properties in how many years so i've bought 17 properties or 17 rental properties okay in 
five five years. years. Yeah, okay, five so yeah, years. So 2018 to today. Okay, so 17 properties in five years. Yeah, and that means you're basically like either buying multiple in a single month or essentially like on average every few months you're buying a property. Yeah. So what is that like getting into that phase of like, bro? I'm trying to get a crop. I'm trying to get like a new property every quarter or whatever it is. Um. So for me, I don't look at it that way mm -hmm. just because it's like I you can't force a deal. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, or if you force a deal, it's you gonna mess up. So I don't for like it just happens sometimes it just happens in ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. Like there's months where I bought two or three things. Mm -hmm. There's been two or three months where I haven't bought anything. Right. Okay. So it's just literally like when I see it, I know and I that's it. Like right now I got something under contract. It's a house, it's a ten thousand square foot lot. Mm -hmm. Literally it's on the 5,000 right down the middle. It's a whole nother one. I'm literally going to split the lot, fix up this house, sell it. I'll probably be into this land for 50 grand. It's not the greatest area. So mm -hmm. a lot might be worth 125 mm -hmm. or whatever. I'll be into a 50. I'll either sell it. I'll either sell it to profit maybe 50 or so, mm -hmm. or I'll just keep it and build like a four, four unit, fourplex on there to just okay. keep. You got partners, you do everything by yourself. Like, how's that work? So, out of the 17 properties that I have, I have partners on three. Okay. So, the other 14 mm -hmm. are just my solo. Okay. And then you were saying after 10 properties on your name, you have to go private money after that. Yeah. So, basically, with so right now, if you're getting like conventional financing, through the bank. Through the bank. Uh, they only allow you to have 10 mortgages. And I I passed 10 mortgages a while ago. And then after that, like it, the financing is a little bit harder because you're they call them non-QM products. So if you look up non-QM, it's non-qualified mortgages. So these are just like different pools of money that are a little bit more expensive, a little bit higher interest rates and all of that. But it's like, what do you do? Like, what do you do? You got to do it. You got to do it. So 2019, I just wanted to buy one property a year. Mm -hmm. And that's because I know it's easy financing. So a lot of people will say they want to buy one a year because they know they can put 5% down, 3% down. Once you get in investments, you got to put 20% down, right, right, right. 25% down. So again, that was just my goal. Mm -hmm. And then um, that first person that lent me money when I bought my second duplex, okay, I, I he had a bunch of money tied up and- he was going to start like lending me money to flip pretty mm -hmm. much. Right. And so I talked to him. I, for know, I was like, down I, payment money. Yeah. Like for the collateral with the hard money you're saying I, either that or he's going to buy cash or okay. he was going to loan me the, like he so was going to be the hard money lender. Exactly. He was oh, going to okay. be, so that. He'd be the, all of it. Exactly. Okay, okay. So I, during COVID, like it was a crazy time. It's like, sorry to interrupt the podcast, but I had a quick question. Are you guys interested in taking your shoe game to another level, but you just don't know where to start? I built a full program just for somebody like you, the six figure sneaker head. It's an eight week program that takes you through all the steps that you need to know. We have a full community where you can engage with everybody else that's going through the the same program as you have monthly live meetups where you can connect with me and other members on the inside and we set goals for each other and held each other accountable also we give away a free pair of shoes every single month with different challenges if this is something that's for you or you're looking to take your game to the next level or even flip your sneakers to turn that into real estate this is the place where you need to be i can help you with finding loans and remodeling properties and getting yourself on the right path to become a millionaire if that's something that you desire if this sounds like something for you hit the link down below in the description and get signed up today this is more than just sneakers i want to see people grow and succeed in all aspects of life let's get back to the podcast I don't know if prices are finna fall, like what's finna happen, right? right. So it's like, I wanted to be uh, in, give myself like the best advantage or the, you know, put myself in the best possible uh, position to take advantage of any opportunities that mm -hmm. came. So I was just on the phone, just calling a bunch of people, just like trying to get access to money. So I called him, I was like, hey, and this video is, at, this is actually recorded. When I was, okay. I was shooting something, I called him. I'm like, hey, like, do you know anyone that would lend kind of like similar to what we were talking about? I know you got a lot of money tied up. He's like, tied up. He's like, I got a guy. Uh, let me talk to him. Let me see. And at this point, like, he's lent me millions, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's kind of so, what So the first me. guy referred you to the second guy. Yeah. And now the second guy is like, yo, guy. That's my guy. That's how you've been rocking. That's my guy. Okay. <laughs> that's my guy. Like, so, I, I would have gotten to where I am without him. Mm -hmm. It just would have took longer. 
Okay, right, so he. Longer. So how did you negotiate with him to not be like a partner on the property, but more of like, I just need the money and I'll give it back to you and we'll just keep working on more properties and I'll give you your money that you want in return? Because I feel like a lot of people on the entry level with the lower amount of money, yeah. people's like, I'll lend you the money, but I'm trying to be an owner in this too. Right. Um, I think it was one of those things that, well, one, the person who referred me to mm-hmm. him, I'm like, that's like my grandpa. It's like my okay. real estate grandpa. Okay. Right. So it's like, he vouched for, he basically like vouched for me. Right. So you're good. So I'm good. Yeah. So when I'm co- talking to him, I'm just like, Hey, like, this is kind of how I do it. He's, he would partner with me, but he just is a guy, older guy, made his money in real estate, commercial real estate. Um, like, so do you know, okay, so this is a Portland thing. You know where the, uh, that's how coffee is. Mm-hmm. They own that whole building. Okay. Okay. So okay. The, the, and they sold, oh, they sold the parking lot across the street for like eleven million years right. ago. So oh, they, yeah, yeah. they didn't make that money. Right. right. So him, he just has this money. He just has cat a lot of couple million in cash for mm-hmm. whatever reason, and he just was willing to lend it out. Right. Because I mean, he's getting a higher return on his money. He's then not. Your he doesn't want to. Like, yeah. Yeah. He doesn't really want to do much, honestly. And so it's like the perfect storm because pretty much. How he made his money is by lending, or he made a lot of his money by lending in the past Mm -hmm. and kind of being partnered with the right people. So it's kind of already up his alley. Mm -hmm. So like on my biggest or one of my biggest properties that I bought for a million fifty, where like he's my partner on two of them because it was just it was so like I could have borrowed the whole million from him, but it would have cost me eighty grand a year and it took a year and a half to do it. So like, Mm -hmm. do I want to be on the hook for? I think it was like eight grand a month, like Mm -hmm. to hold this property. Do I want to? put myself on the hook for that or I right. just want to make you a partner so if it doesn't go exactly the way I want to there's a little bit of safety there because I don't have to pay you anything because we're partners right so that's moving further ahead but okay. that's what turned me up is having access to money because mm-hmm. I as as an agent and like I was already remodeling properties I was already buying properties mm-hmm. right and I was already like wanting to work with investors I was learning the zoning code so as soon as I got them as soon as I had access to money it was over. Right. Like I already like knew what to do. Right. Like it wasn't like one of those things of like, you know, like I stumbled into this because I legit called someone and asked them, hey, do you know someone who would do this? So I was, and then I was already looking for these properties for other people. So I just can now I can just buy them and now I can profit from them. So what what would be some advice you would give to somebody who's like, because there's people that like, I feel like you have to have like at least done a couple of flips and done For a couple sure. of things you gotta have a track to record. even have some type of track record to make people be like, oh, yeah, I'll work with you. Yeah. You can't just be like, oh, I, I bought my first hat, my first property. So I need somebody to give me money, too. Right. Right. So what would you say would be like the baseline criteria? Because you might be in a position one day where that comes to you. For sure. And then now you're going to be playing that role where they just did for you. And that, you know. already. Huh? I said people have asked me before. You see what I'm saying? To lend money, yeah. So, like, what would you say would be that, like, criteria you think um, kind of checks those boxes to be like, you're a qualified individual. I think I want to rock with you. Right. So, I guess to, to speak to, to you directly, uh, in order, so if you're at a point in real estate where you have, you you feel like you could do, like, you know, do a flip or you could do something. I think you have to establish a track record some way, somehow, right? So whether you take the time and you go work for someone who's doing it or you're assisting someone, you have to kind of give yourself an in. So it's like the, the not the stereotypical, but like the typical way of how they always say like, oh, go work for somebody for free and they'll teach you whatever you want to know. But essentially doing something like, Find a way to get in the motion and get in the mix because I guess the thing is this, like people lent me, they were comfortable lending me money because I had a track record. I was not only was I a real estate agent, I flipped things, I invested, I've already kind of did the thing I could show, I already showed promise, right? So it was an easier decision versus someone who's just trying to do it. I think a lot of the time, you like I said, you either have to find a way to get in the mix by like, or, or sacrificing and buying your first one to show proof of concept. Mm-hmm. Uh, or even, or yeah, working working for somebody, or just again, just trying to find a way to get an emotion. It's one of those things I feel like it's hard to give direct advice on because it's like the the access, the people you might have access to, you only need one person to want to lend you money, but it's mm-hmm. like for everyone, it's a different reason why they would lend it to you, right. right? Like they might, some people might lend it because they they know you, they trust you, you got a good family. Some people might trust you because you have a track record. So mm-hmm. I think 
one of the, I think, but the the clearest thing is to be able to have some type of track record. So I think that so that kind of to me, I would summarize it as like identifying yourself, right? Understanding where you stand yeah. and who's around you, yeah, and what you have done or what you need to do to be credible, right? And then networking is key, yeah. And then not being afraid to pick up the phone and ask for help. No, for sure. I feel like that would be like kind of how I would. No, so I would exactly so what you said. No, so like, basically that's a perfect. I feel like that's a perfect summary. Maybe I effed up trying to answer. No, no, no. I'm I just that's how it. I would interpret yeah, so it. So yeah. summarizing it, yeah, not being afraid to ask for help. Like I remember the first time I called the person that lent me that first forty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. When I called him and asked him, there was two people that I called. I didn't even call him first. Yeah, I called somebody else. And he was like, like, oh, let's we can talk about it. Like, what I'm I'm doing something right now. Like, let me give you a call back. I, re- I can visually remember where I was at when I did it. I was so nervous. My heart was pounding. <laughs> I'm sweating. I've never asked anybody for $40,000 or any type of money ever. And so this person, he was like, oh, like, let me see the deal, whatever. Right, and right, right. He just believed, he believed in me. And then I was like, you know, I love, I love him forever. Okay. You know? Okay. But yeah, so, so basically answer the phone. Because even today, like, there's somebody that we both know. I won't say his name. Uh-huh. Uh... Super athlete. Mm-hmm. I just asked him to, to partner with me on some stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, but I we I got his contact. Like, I'm pick up the phone. Like, I mean, what do I got to lose by asking you? Right. You know, it's not like I don't have a track record or there's right. there's not something that I could like. I'm just random guy. Hey, let's right, do right, deals right. together. Like, but it's like you pick yeah. up the phone and you know you you got to ask because if he would have said if he says yes, like that could turn me up. If he says no, you never know if just you didn't ask. Pushing. You right. know, yeah. Or they might say no and then later be like. They asked me a couple years ago. I saw their growth since, exactly. and then now I like what you're doing. No, for da, sure. Da. So, like, even setting that planting that seed, I always say that too. Like, when you're um, for a lot of different things, like I notice, like for social media side, you uh, leave like a DM, like for a brand, and say, yeah. "Hey, I'd love to work with you guys." Da da da. Whoop whoop. Like, you know, because everybody just wants some free stuff from the brand. Yeah. But really, you're doing it to build a relationship with the brand. So for me, I like it because it's like putting a timestamp on it. Yeah. Like I hit you up today. And then a year from later, you know, I might see you at an event or something. Yeah. And then I message again, oh, nice seeing you at this event, whatever. And then they see it because they, they met me now and they're checking for the DM. And they're like, oh, damn, you messaged me a year ago because you wanted to work with me. Yeah. And now they're already like more excited about it. For because, sure. Because you know, it's genuine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, you really did that. You know, and sometimes it might be you hit them up not every day or nothing, but like, right. you know, every few months or every six months or something. And then it lines up and it's like. It's perfect time, and they see you've been really trying to do this, you've been persistent with right. these things. So, and I, I think, think it's good, and I think that's a part of it too is like being persistent too. Because I feel like there's a lot of people that feel like they have a great idea in the moment, like, Oh, I just want to flip property. Mm-hmm. It's like, All right, well, what do you have? Like, I think you have to, if you could be objective about yourself, right? Objective, look at yourself outside of yourself and say, Would I lend this person money? Right. What I so would you lend yourself money based off of what you know, not because you feel like, but if you could that just physically look at yourself and be like, all right, this person, you've done this, you've done this, you've done this. These are this is your skill set. Like, would you lend you money if you came to ask you? Right. You know. Right. So people's in there probably listening to this right now, like. Hey, I wouldn't lend myself nobody. Yeah. Like, yeah so, it, it, but that's okay though. Like you gotta. Figure out what you need to do to get in that position. For sure. I say self-awareness is key. I say self-awareness is key. I think in business in general, because it's like the one thing that I don't like about school that I like about business is like, you know how if you're not good at, if you're not, if you don't want to edit these videos, right, you could pay so-and-so to edit these videos. But in school, if you were trying to get help from someone in class to be able to try to figure out this Oh, you can't, you have to figure this out on your own, right? Or like, oh, that's cheating. Mm -hmm. But it's like, that's what the rich people do. Like, I don't do every single thing for myself. Right. You know, like I don't buy the properties. I mean, I don't buy them. And then on top of it, I'm in there painting and working on the roof and cleaning it. Right. Taking the photos and Mm -hmm. posting it. Like there's people whose expertise are doing portions of everything that it takes to do it. And Mm -hmm. I let them do it. I'm not the stager. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not the painter. I'm not the stager, but I know who to call to do what and how to organize it in in a way to where everything gets done. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to know how to do everything. Okay. So we talked about a lot of good things, right? Right. Money, properties, lenders, people helping out, all this stuff. What are some of the like biggest struggles you've had um, 
with this whole process? Like where you were like, remember you saying talking about different emotions, yeah, different forms of the, the depression over the years, yeah. whatever, right? Like, what what was one of those like tough moments during this real estate time? I mean, in just the past five years, I guess they come. I, honestly, there's it's still not over. Like it's still like I think people think you get to a certain point, so it's like, oh, I have ten million. You have ten million dollars in real estate, right. and you're building all of this stuff, and you make. However many six figures that you make, mm-hmm. or if you have X amount of money, it's like they never stop because it's like real estate is one of those games of like it's always if something. you have if you have a hundred thousand dollars, you can find how to spend it. If you have a million dollars, you can figure out how to spend it. If you got 10, you got a hundred, like it's just literally the levels just go higher and higher and mm-hmm. higher. So it's like mm-hmm. it's an infinite money game. So it mm-hmm. doesn't matter how much money you have or how much money you make. Uh so I think. It's one of the the issues that I would say that I like to so I guess okay I'll go back to like a more like recent stressful time of like 2022 right so let's say January or not January July 2022 mm-hmm. the you know the Federal Reserve is now combating inflation interest mm-hmm. rates are just going up yeah, and yeah, up yeah. and up and the market is just tightening and tightening things are slowing down and yeah I remember that like is it are we about to be in a recession mm-hmm. and then we had two two quarters where GDP went down so basically it's how much money is moving through the economy right, right? so if it goes down for two consecutive quarters that is technically a recession mm-hmm. so like we had that but it was like not really a recession because the job market like it was just weird just weird time so it's just like what is that about to look like mm-hmm. for me Right. What is that going to look like? Yeah. I remember like looking on, cause I'll be looking on like the different platforms like every night before I go to sleep. And I just remember seeing like prices of homes. And then like, I'm like, damn, they had this one listed at like 700. Now it's like 550. Yeah. Like, what's yeah. going on? Yeah. Like, what should I do? I don't even know if I should be getting in right now, but this rate is crazy. Yeah. Like, I'll be paying the price of something else if, even if I got the house for cheaper. For sure. And then seeing stuff, like, I didn't know what was about to happen, honestly. But it's, I feel like it's coming back to a... The thing is, so I, I can tell you what I think happened. Well, that was on new development stuff, too. Right. But still, but that's the... So I wasn't ever worried about my personal investment portfolio. That's right. not the part that I'm worried about. Right. The new construction is what you get worried about. That's what I was looking at. if you have... Okay, so let's say, for example... Let's say for the sake of conversation, I got 10 projects going on. Mm-hmm. And let's say I have in, like I'm paying interest on all of these every month. So let's mm-hmm. just say take I'm paying two grand a month on 10 projects. Okay. That's 20 grand a month. They're not selling. Let's say they're not selling. Mm-hmm. That's 20 grand a month every month. Until, until they, until they sell. sell. And you gotta like do a little price drop or whatever. You're right. You got it. So it's like only are you spending money to hold it. If it's not selling, you're lowering the price, and then it's like, are, are am I gonna? Are you gonna be upside down? Like, like your gap is just squeezing like this, it's, exactly. and then eventually it's like, all right, we got an Airbnb so, now. <laughs> so right, so then it comes to the point where it's like, if it drops down far enough, when you sell it, not only did you have to pay the money to hold it, but now you have to bring money to then, like, if you owed a hundred, let's say for sake of conversation, you're selling something. For you owe four hundred thousand initially, you're gonna sell it for five fifty, but you have to sell it for three fifty, mm-hmm. right? In order to to for the you know to make good on the loan, you have to bring in that extra fifty. So not only did you have to feed it, like and so if you yeah. and then if you don't have the so if you don't have the money, then what? Right. Yeah, you're, you're bankrupt. Down bad. That's monopoly. That's monopoly. You got the game. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like you you go through all of these thoughts like, do I have enough reserves? Like, yep. can I withstand this? Should like I sell this I now? This? Yeah. How long can I hold out? Do I dig a deeper hole? Do I try to cut? Do I cut? Do I cut losses now? Do like, I put more in it to try I, to make it nicer? Do I, exactly. Do I try to do add I try more value? To, yeah. Do I try to add more value? Like literally, it's a roller coaster because this is your life. Like right. this isn't just like, and it's like when I'm stressed out. Like when I'm stressed out. My world kind of stops a little bit. I'll be honest with you. Even today, like it still just stops a little. So like, how, when I'm super stressed out, okay, so, not mild stress. I can. Assume. Yeah, yeah. So how do you deal with stress in current time? Like I eat. You eat. I eat. So you're like stressed out. You're yeah. like, I'm about to go get something, I'm to, get eat. something to eat. I'll get some donuts, some Krispy Kreme. Oh, so you be mad? <laughs> no, when I'm stressed, like if anybody that knows me knows I'm a stress eater. Because like I don't smoke, I don't right. drink, right? I don't really party. I'm not doing any drugs. Like, I'm not doing no drugs. So Let's I might get just something to eat. eat a little donut. <laughs> you it gets a little dopamine from that. I'm so done. And then I tell myself, you know, what's your favorite kind of donut? So it's glaze. I'm basic. Glaze? glaze. Regular? Yeah. Old fashioned? 
Yeah. Which one? Uh, so I like. So I used to have you. You know Helen Bernhardt on Broadway. Mm-hmm. That used to be the like. That's what a donut tasted like. It, anything okay, okay. that's not that, it's a good, it could be good, but like this is what it's supposed to taste this like. This is the example. And then kind of Krispy Kreme kind of got me, bro, more recently. You like Krispy Kreme? Yeah, I know, bro. I know. Uh, I know bro. Okay, so Krispy Kreme, regular glaze. Yeah. No maple bars, no, no I, I, chocolate, no I like, stuffing, nah, no uh, sprinkles. And then I no like uh, pralines and cream from Baskin Robbins. Okay. My grandma put me on it. I'm like an old school, I'm an old school, uh, or what's it called? Old, old school, old fashioned, whatever. Yeah. Like a glazed donut? For, like, oh, yeah. Uh, it's like a more textured. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, like a, the edges is a little different. Yeah. It's not like the circle. Yeah, 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 I know yeah. what you're talking it's about. It's not all puffy and soft. Not, it's like I a little bit more it. textured. I don't know. I feel it's, like, a, it's an old school. Uh, I know exactly called, what you're talking about. Why it's, can't I think of the name of it? It's in my head right Old now. fashioned. I know what you're talking about. If Whatever. I, if I pulled it, I could- Those are fire. If you put those in the microwave for a little bit- I don't use microwaves. Bruh. I don't use microwaves. You got to put those in the microwave. I don't even own a microwave. That's crazy. That I've used microwaves since like middle school. For donuts, a little seven seconds, a little six seconds. Okay, I don't know. A little zap, a little zap. I don't use them. I don't use them. But my so stress, bro, is normally like every, probably every couple months. Like my because I in, so in new construction, I have a partner. So mm-hmm. I have on my new construction. I have a partner. I have a lot of my own projects that are coming up mm-hmm. that'll be solo. But okay. everything that I've done today, I have a partner on. So when I'm freaking out, I gotta call him. Literally, that's the first call. Like, what? Are, what do you say? Like, when you first pick up, you gotta talk me off the ledge, bro. Like, talk me off the ledge. Like, I see, I seen this. Like, what is this? And he just talks me off the ledge every time, and I feel better. That's the only person who under like. This is what I'll say, yeah. it, and you might be able to relate to this, but once you get to a certain point of like perceived success, mm-hmm. the problems that you have, no one can relate to, bro. It's the worst. It's the worst. The worst. Like my mom will tell me, like, oh, you just have rich, you just have rich boy problems, right? Or rich man problems. It's just like, it's like, and then they think you're smart, so like, oh, right. you'll figure it out. Like right. you always figure it out, you'll figure right. it out, and it's like you'll be all right, you, exactly. But it's just right. like in your head, it's like, bro, I could lose it all. Yeah, you know? no, I feel that. What's a okay? My other one was too because I feel like it sucks, but you know, what is it like being a young black man with success? All these different things, navigating in the space, dealing with especially the type of people in Portland, because you know how that goes sometimes. It's amazing, bro. <laughs> it's a, no, I'm not even joking. It's amazing, bro. Okay. I'm gonna tell you why I say that. I'm gonna tell you why I say that. And this is what I genuinely believe. So I'm not one of those like the world's trying to hold me down. Right, 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 right. right. Whatever. Like I looked at it, I looked at being a young black man as an advantage. And I'll Definitely. tell you, and I'll, I'll tell you why. It's because so I'm not the dresser. I've never really been a dresser, mm-hmm. right? But like when I first got real estate, I'm I'm wearing, I'm I'm coming through, like I'm looking like a business guy, right? Mm-hmm. Suits, whatever, whatever it is, like, you know, not overkill, but like mm-hmm. I'm whatever it is. And so I feel like if if they expected me to know less mm-hmm. because of how I look or the color right, of my skin, right, right. right? And I come through, I look the par, and I really know what I'm talking about. Right. You might think I'm smarter than I actually am. You know what I mean? Like right. you already underestimated me, right. and I over delivered. Right. So I always looked at it like it was an advantage. Okay. Okay. Right. And then also like, but you haven't had those moments where people are like, "All right, that was disrespectful. You got to chill." Like people haven't said nothing or done nothing. Like not. And so I think if I've experienced something because of the, my what I look like or the color of my skin, it probably was always passive. Like mm-hmm. if I'm at an open house, well, like, that's Portland. But I guess what I'm saying it's <laughs> one of those. That's the definition of Portland. <laughs> no, but I guess it's I guess to explain it, if I let's say I'm let's say I'm hosting an open house, I'm okay. sitting here on the couch, I'm selling this house, right? Mm-hmm. And people walk in, I greet them, you know, have a conversation. And let's say if I had looked differently, they would have worked with me. But because I look a certain way, they don't work with me. Mm-hmm. They're not openly walking in the house and I'll uh, look at you. Oh, I'm not no, working no, with no, you. Yeah. So it's one of those things. It's like if I've experienced it. I don't know that I experienced it. So since I don't know, I don't count it and it doesn't matter. Got you. Because I mean, it's, I mean, I don't like, I've defied all of the odds. Mm-hmm. So I don't even, I don't even like look whatever. at it. Because it's like, and at this point, like, I don't see how I could, someone could hold me back in the sense of like, if I see a great deal that's on the market and I write an offer and I have a great offer and they're going to make more money working with me than the other person because my offer is better. They're gonna have to take it. They don't care that right. what I look like. That doesn't mm-hmm. matter if I what if I'm LGBTQIA, black, upside down, blue, green. It doesn't matter. 
They're like, we getting the money. We getting the money. That's it. We want the green. I feel it. So that's how I look at it. So it's like, and I genuinely believe that. So like, I don't, to me, it's great. I don't know. It's just great. Because okay. I, 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 I feel like then you get to the perspective on the other side of success where it's like, oh, we want you to do this. Right, right, because right. Because right. <laughs> we need to hit quarter. <laughs> we need to hit this thing. So like, I mean, like I've, I've sold properties for the city mm-hmm. before. I don't know if I would have got it if my color, my skin color was different. Right. So I Sounds don't. like double-edged sword. Both yeah, double-edged like, sword. Yeah. But I think, I mean, I don't know. I just keep, I just know how to position the sword. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I don't, it's like, I, oh, that reflection, it can hit you. Not exactly. Me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got to do a little something different with the wrist. But no, I think it's great. Bro. Oh, because you got the Rolex on? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know. I Tell us about the Rolex. Is that right? Tell us about the Rolex. Uh, I mean, so this right here, I don't know which can. Yeah, this camera, this to me personally, this is a hood trophy. Okay, you know, it's a the presidential the rally. presidential yeah. Rolex, eighteen karat gold, mm-hmm. diamond, diamond dial. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, so I saw you when you got it. That one that night, day, we I getting, got it that same day. You got it the same day. Yeah, that day. That's right, right. It was just out getting food. I was out getting food. I don't know. I might have been stressed out. You know? no, <laughs> He's I was like, like, I spent too much on this I trolley. Spent, I got to go get some but donuts. It's like one of those things, it's like, it's a hood trophy. At least for me, it's like I always wanted, I always wanted, I always wanted one. And I had one, I've had this same watch before. It was like an older version, okay. like a used version. So how much was the old one? Probably like 10 bands. And then you sold it for how much? Uh, and when did you buy that Rolex? The first one. First one was 2016. So you bought that like I'm a real estate agent. I bought a Rolex. I just wanted. <laughs> I just always wanted it. Bought it. Okay, so you and had that for how long? Uh, probably some years. Okay, so you had that for a little bit. Yeah, but you wasn't really like seeing the it success you wanted to type thing. Like, yeah, it just I, it was premature. I yeah. bought it prematurely, and this is like get rid of Rolex, get rid of the car type situation. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then. And then now, when I got this one, it's more like it's Which more deserved. Literally, like a few months ago or something. Yeah, like that. no, like how long ago was that? A couple months ago? No, like the second, like like what, what's today? Was that this same? Was that a month ago? That was twenty seven days ago. Oh damn! I feel like, bro, I got a lot going on. It's a yeah, lot. no, for sure. Was, <laughs> Time flies. I just know the date because on when you buy one, they mark oh, your yeah, warranty yeah, card yeah, yeah. and it says the date you okay. bought it on. There. So you bought it a month ago. Yeah, and. What made you be like, all right, I could justify buying this Rolex. And this was a how much compared to the other one? This one was 43000 43000 So you bought this for like, is that retail price? Yes, yeah, retail. Okay, so you bought it at the store or something? Yeah. It, yeah okay. Yeah, British, so yeah. Lambo next? Nah. <laughs> nah, I'm, <laughs> nah, not, but, I'm, okay, not, so, I'm not a Lambo guy. My guy, you know, my bro guy, you know, you probably know. Well, you know, you know. Uh, bro, honestly, they're not that hard to get. But He got a year. It's clean. Um, what was I going to say? Oh. So what made you justify like, all right, it's time to get the Rolex? Like, I didn't. I didn't. When it's what happens is this right now, Rolex is short supply. Mm-hmm. You can't. You call a Rolex store right now. You can't get them. Everything in the stores exhibition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like you can't buy it. So it's like I was talking to the lady that I bought because I have another Rolex. Okay. And so I was talking to her. She had an allocation for me. Mm-hmm. If am I gonna wait? another two years to for Jeez. them to maybe have it. Okay. So I didn't so just It was just like ch- a kind of like spirit of moment came. type thing. It, it came. But you also just closed on some deals or you started a new project or something at the same time, didn't you? I saw it kind of aligned with something in else. Short, yes. So basically I sold uh, there's a new construction property mm-hmm. that we sold, and that's what I used to pay for the watch. Okay, so you like you made the money, yeah. on a new construction yeah. deal. I didn't even I spent the money before I made it, which is never a good thing to do. Never spend oh, the money before so, you oh, make it. So, I had okay. a deal that went pending. And you're like, I'm buying the watch. Yeah, <laughs> <It'll basically. sell. laughs> it just it really just happened. Like it just wasn't one of those okay. things. Like okay. I was like, you know what? This is the moment. Right, I'm right. finally this going down like to the party. store. Right, I'm about right. to buy it. It okay. was like I went down there, just was talking to her, like, oh, like, do you guys gonna get any more allocations? Just talking, have a conversation. Mm-hmm. And then shortly thereafter, they she had an allocation. She thought of me and okay. then I bought it. Okay. So it wasn't. I wish. I wish I could tell you. Okay. Like, okay. Okay. No, yeah, that makes sense. I, I, I made a million, bro, and I just <laughs> like, yeah, I just need to go grab that. No, I'm just wondering because everybody no. has like their, you know, story to 
why that why the Rolex is so important yeah, to them, I just, or like I don't, why me, they want one, or what made me, them get one. I'm at the point where I could do without it, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't. It's a watch, like, yeah. but it means something to me because it's something I've always wanted. Right. So I look down at it. I'd be like, this is dope. Right. You know, and then when you walk in certain rooms with certain people, if they know what it is, and that's the thing too. It's one of those. That's things. what's making me think about getting a watch because I just I got to have a watch. I don't really care. Right. My, I really. Like I have some crazy PEs that's worth watches, yeah. and I'm like, oh, I'd rather have the PEs because I right. like PEs. No, for sure. I like shoes, you know. It's not, but like, I do understand that you do get like same thing. People are like, oh, you don't need a Lambo, you don't need a Ferrari, you don't need it, but that gets you into like rallies or yeah. whatever it's or certain statement. rooms, and it's it's a, statement. it's a statement piece, yeah. or it's like, uh, we'll put you in a different group of people. Yeah. And I'll have you in an elevated status with that to then cause new conversation, sure. which then opens more doors. So no, for sure. It's also investment into your brand. No, I I I so I agree with that, but I don't depending on where you are. Cause right. I guess this is what I'll say to anybody out here watching this, don't don't spend it all just to buy the watch. Cause it's never really worth it. At the end of the day, it's just a watch, right? So it's like I've made a bunch of money with the watch, without the watch. No watch, right. whatever, right? So I guess with that being said, don't shortcut it because I shortcutted it. But at the end of the day, once you get to a certain place, yes, because it's like if I see if I'm out, we're out in public, mm -hmm. oh nice, nice, you know, nice watch, and I got on something similar to what you got on. Mm -hmm. If I spent forty three thousand dollars on a watch, and you know exactly what watch this is, you know it's worth fifty grand. Mm -hmm. That could. Okay, he's doing something right. that's different. Right, right, right. This, that's a salary. That's an average salary, mm -hmm. just sitting right there on your wrist, casually. Right, right. Just like you see somebody hop out of the Lambo and walk into Chipotle, exactly. you're like, "What's this guy doing? What's, like, yeah, what's, what's sure. going like, on here?" It's a, it piques your interest a little bit. Yeah, they're obviously doing something right. Right. And so that's, I think that's that's kind of I think where it goes as far as a conversation piece. Okay. But I never, I don't think it's. It's whatever. I'll yeah. make money with it without it. Right, it's, right, right. It's all the for same. Sure. Yeah, no, I think those things do play a factor, though. Um, in a certain environments, they, like I said, just put you in the right group of people sometimes, and seeing that type of stuff, like for sure. Because I've been really thinking more of the car side. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I kind of want to get do, like do, a. Do. You make enough money. Tell them to do both. <laughs> Comment right now. Do both. <laughs> nah, I'm chilling. <laughs> nah, I just uh, I don't know. I, I have been thinking about the car thing, but I think maybe next year. I might what do something. Thinking? I might do something. Send the wraps. Yeah, say. Uh, uh, I want to wrap it too. I want to have an icy like a matte purple, Sounds like DNA. some clean. You know Massive what I'm saying? Purple, you know what I'm saying? I also, I think that I, I don't know. Some people might be interested like managing uh, a relationship through this stuff, like having a girlfriend or whatever like how has that been like because as you get bigger right like yeah. you know everybody wants to like find that person before they start making money and doing those type of yeah. things but it's hard because like money is a big driver for a lot of different things with relationships for sure well, no matter what people say right for sure i would say managing a relationship i still this is what i say any woman that i'm with uh or have been with during me being in real estate knows that this kind, of, this kind of comes for like I'm on a mission. Like the mission is bigger than just me wanting to make some money right now. So mm -hmm. I'm putting some money over you, right? Mm -hmm. Like I look at it. I feel like I hate to say it because it sounds so cliche or whatever, but it's like the generational wealth mm -hmm. thing and all of that type of stuff, right? So it's like I came for you know I didn't come for much stereotypical thing. Right. Want to leave my kids with something, whatever, mm -hmm. right? So I look at it as something bigger than that. And so it's kind of like, this is what takes priority because it's like, you know, whether we're eating at a place or we're traveling somewhere like without what this is, without what's going on right here, like we're not sitting here having this conversation right now because right. this we're not eating this $500 steak because I work at, I'm, you know what I mean? Whatever yeah. it is. So I guess relationship wise, I've always said to Margaret that this, what I do comes first and for good reason. And they understand it or I could, I can't be in a relationship. I just couldn't do it. You know, mm -hmm. um, but I would say it's one of those things that I like if I'm dating, if they're interested in what I'm interested in, it kind of helps a little makes bit. It easier. You know, it makes it easier mm -hmm. and it makes it a little bit more understanding. But I haven't had I haven't really had any issues, but I've always been in a long term relationship. Yeah. So it's like no crazy, like traumatic. Experiences no, nothing, or nothing, nothing, yeah. nothing crazy, because if it is like I can't do it, mm -hmm. like I can't like because the one thing about real estate. And I think even what you have going on at this point, it's this is like a lifestyle. Like mm -hmm. I can't just this doesn't just oh turn your phone off. It's because everybody just breathe. you got deals coming your way. Yeah, you got things this, are coming that, my way. I got timelines. Yeah. 
tenants, toilet breaking, even though I got property managers that deal with that. But if there's something that's bigger, like I have to be over there to direct traffic on what's going on here, mm-hmm. this, did you, did you do this? Did they get this? So mm-hmm. it's like, you can't necessarily cut it off. And even if you hire somebody, you still have to give them direction on what it is that needs to be done. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, it's a lifestyle. But point. also though, with that, you still have to be like present with the person that you're with and For all sure. those things. So like, how do you um, separate the two? Like, are you like, my phone's on airplane mode and nobody calling me right now. We just chilling. Or is it like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm good at compartmentalizing my life. Mm-hmm. Uh. So it's just it's just kind of like after I think it was harder early on, mm-hmm. like when I first started, like I'm because you're addicted to yeah, it. My yeah, my phone if it rings, I'm picking it up because right. anything could just could be this. Like as you kind of settle in, you understand. Like if you call me after a certain time, I might not answer, mm-hmm. De- depending on the the severity of the importance of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like if it's my business partner. I'll always answer my business partner call because mm-hmm. it's always there's always something there. But if it's like I'm, it's a a client or a contract or something, and it's like well, you're not on the site right now, you're not working. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. So it's like you have to learn how to separate it, but like to the point where it makes sense. You know where it makes sense because it's like you can't mm-hmm. answer every single call because like there's certain days on my call log and my phone, all of the calls are from the same day. Mm-hmm. So it's like legit a hundred calls in out whatever. Like it'll. Easy. Mm-hmm. Like I average probably five hours on the phone a day. So what's your like week, your normal week look like? Which I know it's never normal, but. No, I'm a routine what's, guy. What's your, so what's your wake kinda... up at five, mm-hmm. wake up at five, first 20 minutes, uh, first 20 minutes in the bathroom, get myself together, whatever. Mm-hmm. Try to do Peloton 20 minutes, uh, meditate 10, journal 10, read 20. Uh, and then I was planning my day for 20 minutes, so look at over all my projects, create the to-do list, mm-hmm. what I need to do, where are we at, do that, spend the first 100 minutes on the most important thing, then I go through my to-do, like whatever I got to do for that day, important task, and I schedule my appointments in the afternoons, mm-hmm. go to job, job sites, look at this remodel, look at this new construction, is everything on par, what needs to be done, mm-hmm. that's, that's kind of how I structure it. So what about an off day, like, how does that look? Uh, I don't do well on off days. Do you have one every week, or is uh, it kind of just like- Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. I'll, su- Saturday. Oh yeah, that was the day you said you clean up around the house or yeah. something? Yeah, so Saturdays I take light. Like I'll work on Saturday, mm-hmm. but it's like a light day. Like okay. I might drive, look at this, do this. Or some days on Saturdays I'll sit in the office because I feel like I can get ahead on Saturday. Because mm-hmm. Monday through Friday I feel like I'm on a clock. It's like right. ticking, all right, do this, okay, do this. But like I feel like on those chill days, no one's expecting anything from me. So anything that I do on a Saturday or Sunday, like I'm just getting ahead. Um Sundays, I'm not really gonna do much. Uh, I just that's just one day, kind of reflective, sit back, uh, wash my clothes, clean my house, because that's like therapeutic to mm-hmm. me to do something that's kind of like mindless versus like what I'm doing in real estate. It's like I'll have to think about this and so many everything things. is so meticulous. Yeah. Okay, did you remember this? You got to send this to this person. Did they get this? Did they have this? And it's just all these different things because mm-hmm. like like you know, legit, I have. Five or six new construction projects solo. I have five or six with my partner. Okay. Remodeling a five unit apartment building. Remodeling a duplex. Doing a flip with one of my friends. Looking at another flip. So I was like, I have fifteen projects going on at mm-hmm. any given time. Mm-hmm. So you got lenders. You got lenders. You got escrow officers. You right. got contractors. Right. Like you the got, inspector rescheduling. Like where he at, bro? You, got, like you have so many different people <laughs> coming at you, different angles, different right. things all of the time. So it's like, you have to be able to just balance everything, mm-hmm. you know? So, so I mean, okay. that's- Do you use uh, like paper or like digital notes? Uh, like I use Google, like Google like Tasks, Google Tasks, Google, Google, task. task, Google Calendar. Okay. I've been playing with Notion. I don't even heard of Notion. Yeah, I've yeah. been playing with that a little bit. Okay. I'm trying to figure it out. But right now, like I've just been creating a lot of systems on trying to like, to remove myself from certain things because like there's a That's lot of things that are right there. Yeah, there's yep. not a lot of things that are worth my time at this point. Cause mm-hmm. like I think once you get to a certain point of success, you have to start to realize how much your time is actually worth. Right. Right. So like I would say 2020 on I no 2021. So 2021, 2022, and even this year. I'm worth probably like a million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. And how I quantify that is I look at how much money I make mm-hmm. and how much equity I created. Mm-hmm. And so it's consistently been a million dollars. Right. So my like I'm an hour, I think I forgot what the hourly is. That's like 400 an hour on 40 hour work week or okay, something like okay, that. Okay. Some might be 500. Also, yeah, you just divide it by work. Whatever, just divide yeah. it by whatever. So it's like I'm worth that. So if I'm doing something that I could pay 
twenty dollars an hour to be done. Right. I just wasted four eighty. Right. Every hour that I'm doing something, that's a twenty dollar hour task. I wasted mm-hmm. four four eighty mm-hmm. just to for what? Right. So it's like I and so it's like I need to focus on what's most important, which is finding deals and finding the money. Mm-hmm. That's it. Literally, that's the highest level thing that I could be doing. Right. Outside of that, everything else is just maintenance. But it's like when you're maintaining something, you already have it. So it's like okay. I don't manage my properties because it's like it doesn't make me any money to manage the properties. I already have the properties. They're already paying. Right. I don't want to pick up the phone and to deal, even though if I could save a little bit of money by doing it, it's like, well, what am like, what am I losing versus what am I saving? Mm-hmm. So I'm saving twenty dollars, but I just missed out on four eighty mm-hmm. for every hour I spent doing that. It doesn't make sense. Right. So it's like you have to be able to quantify your time. And so like the highest value thing that I could do right now is create the systems to then free up my time. Mm-hmm. So it's like I think you know life, our business is about leveraging time, you know, leveraging time and money. Mm-hmm. You know. That's, I would say that's pretty and much the name of the game. And then you have more time so you can be more consistent on your YouTube channel. For sure. <laughs> so for so here's the thing. So look. Kill me, right. small. So this is, a, this is an insider between me and him. <laughs> About every three months, I call DJ. And I, I'm so critical and I want it to be so good that like I keep doing these reiterations in my head over and over and I keep coming up with a new thing and I never release and I just need to drop consistently. But it's like, it's hard. I think lately it's hard because there's so much stuff going on that I'm not in a space to be creative, to sit down and be like, all right, this is what this is called. This is where we're doing this. We're doing this. Cause it's like, I get caught up in the gravity of But that's what I told you before. You gotta like let go. You got to let it just be sure. its thing and sure. just let it be no, raw yeah. and let people see it because I'm sure there's a lot of people listening and watching like, I would love to see day to day or whatever, sure. like how you manage these things. Like, uh, so yeah, just don't overthink it too much. Cause no, I found overthink that too, it. like on my channel, like, bro, like the videos you put the most effort into, they don't do the best. Like, right. and we know that that's a classic cliche thing, but it's true. Like the raw, organic, natural, easy to film stuff typically is the stuff that works. Like, it's not For like sure. you're being lazy. Cause your biggest video is the, uh, the one, two, one of you, one of your biggest videos mm-hmm. is the retro Jordans, like just pictures of Jordan's, Jordan's one to three. Yep. Basic. Or 23, my bad. Yep. One through 23. Yep. Yeah. That's I'm like, like, oh, I know this will work. Yeah. And I knew it was going to work. Yeah. Like, but yeah, it's funny how it goes like that. It's an yeah, for sure. Game. And I think for me, like the YouTube thing I want to do and I'm sick because there's so much growth that's happened from the first video. Yeah. Some of it has been caught, but it's like- That's why I'm like, bro, all that should have been on A lot camera. of it is, but a lot of it isn't. But see, that's the thing. Everybody put in the comment section, if you made it this far to the video or to the podcast or whatever, tell them to drop the videos because <laughs> he got videos in his archive of all this stuff, all this information, all these experiences. And he'd be like, ah, oh, it didn't come out right. It's not as good as I wanted it to be. I'm like, bro, put this shit on the internet. No, nah, for sure. For sure. I think last time we had a conversation, we sat down. Mm-hmm. I kind of, you that conversation gave me clarity and it shifted the direction. It will talk off cam a little bit. I got like, <laughs> I'll tell you where I'm at with it and okay. what I've been doing. And it will just go from there. But I think, I think net net, what I'll say is I think in general, as I'm super critical, I'm over critical of that type of stuff because I want it to look good. But in my head, like I've watched, this is gonna sound so corny, right? But I'm just be transparent. So corny. I've watched so much Mr. Beast interviews, mm. right? On like his whole thing is like right now. I mean, you've you probably you've met him, right? So right, you, yeah, yeah. But it's like just putting more effort into the videos. Right. And Making how, it 10% better. Exactly. Yeah. Like if you a 10% increase in the video being better translates to substantially more views. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like, I just, yeah. So you're, I do need to just put stuff out, but I also, when I do put stuff out, want to be in a space where I actually have a narrative that I'm building on that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And not just dropping stuff. Cause I think where I went wrong is initially making of a mogul was about, um, me just documenting the journey. That's mm-hmm. all that it was. Like, I just want to document like this journey because I know that I'm going to be successful. Yeah. Right? Because I believe in myself. Mm-hmm. Then it became like, oh, this is not really getting the kind of views that I want. Then I'm trying to create these five ways to make money in real estate in 2023. Right? right, right, right? right and then right. I kind of changed it. And then I didn't catch that I did that until later. Mm-hmm. So then I kind of want to bring it. Then I, like, during that, I'm like, oh, I should do this type of videos or make it this way. Then I'm kind of like, 
as it settled, we had that conversation a while ago. It came back like, this isn't about, this isn't about me trying to run up a crazy following and five best ways to do because everybody already does that. It's not about the views. Yeah. It's about the impact. No, for sure. And <laughs> that's I feel the like, big it, like once that's why we was just talking to Trey. Right. Like, don't worry about the money. Don't for worry sure. about none of that stuff. For sure. It's about the impact. But I, how are you going to impact the people? How many people look like us are doing these things? For sure. Not that many. So what do we need to do? Go show them the steps and the blueprint to all these things. No, you're right. Be the example you're, you're 100% and make right. an impact. And not even just for the people that look like us, for everybody, no, anybody. For but you know what I'm saying. Because I think people, I think whether you're our color or not, everyone has certain trials and tribulations mm-hmm. that are similar. Whether somebody's parents had them young and they struggle, whether you, whatever color you are, whether you live life without one parent or both parents mm-hmm. or you hustled or you did whatever. Like, I think there's a lot of different things to see someone come from the bottom and do it. And that's what it was about. Yes. But I lost sight though. Yeah. And I didn't realize that I lost sight. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it's like me being conscious enough to see, like I started in this direction, then went to this direction, now trying to bring it back, but then trying to do it in a way that makes sense because ultimately and we know this, right? We I can say this. I could be candid. If the views don't, if the videos don't at least hit a certain threshold of views, it was trash, bro. That's, really? You don't think Do you so? Think so? I don't think so. I think even with my like, even with my channel now, there's videos that I'm like, when you really understand YouTube and social media and content, you understand that not every video has the same purpose. I agree. So some videos are for virality to get a lot of views. Some videos are for a lot of they will convert to a lot of sales or they will convert to a lot of followers or they will have a huge impact or will grow your email list or so when you understand the types of videos and what they're for then you'll be like i'm making them for these topics so i think that's where you understand and it's like when you're really harvesting a true because that's the thing People can have a million subscribers right? and they can't sell nothing because yeah. what? They got a fake audience yeah. and it's not yeah. like they bought the audience, but it's yeah. a bunch of random people following them for no for sure. reason. Yeah. Yeah. But you can have 10,000 followers and have a strong 500 people out of those people no, that sure. are like call audience loves everything you do yeah. and they're supporting you and they believe in you and you've helped them. For and, sure. and now got, it's a difference. So what I'll say is, even though like my following on YouTube is small and on Instagram, like my people rock with like I'll be, like, be having conversations, like yep. they'll call me, like, like I like I never promoted it ever, but I put a link, I mm-hmm. put like a link in my bio, like wherever the link tree is, mm-hmm. and like there's a consultation call. So like you have to click it to see it. And people I usually talk to people, a lot of different people, people yep. like thank you. People like I got DM and I'm never even on Instagram, I got DM like Bro, I watch your stuff, bro. You inspired me to get my first one. Like, I used to watch stuff. Like, people, like, when I take down my video, where, where is it at, bro? Exactly, where are you bro. doing, bro? I'll come, and I just be thinking, I don't, I think I'm trying to be like Drake. You're I trying need to straight chase hits, the views. Bro. I need You're trying hits. to chase the views. No, for sure. I don't yeah. know. I'm going to figure it out, y'all. But, you know, like I said, if y'all want to watch, you know, some of old stuff, it's Antoine, Antoine J. Dean. Making of a mogul again. The doc, the it was it's supposed to essentially be like a real life journey, or me documenting the journey mm-hmm. of what it was like, basically starting from nothing, coming to however much. So a lot of it got missed along the way of me out of me overthinking. But there's still there's there's still a lot of story left. Though. Definitely I mean, only a couple years and you know definitely five years. So into okay, it. let's wrap it up. Yeah. Last final fire round questions. I always do. Yeah. How many pairs of shoes do you have in your collection? I, I'm low ten. I'm minimalist. Okay, what's the greatest shoe of all time? It, it probably got to be the thirteens, bro. The thirteens. Okay. If you could wear one shoe for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ah, damn. Probably some Crocs. Some Crocs? I ain't gonna lie. I like the Crocs, oh, man. Get it right I almost here. wore get some Crocs. Here. Man. I don't know if y'all can see. Cut the, my, cut the I almost video. wore some Crocs here cut just the, to just to mess with him because it's. I know it's gonna have a little sneaker, but I wear Crocs the most. I will probably start wearing Crocs in oh nine. No BS. Like there's a lot of people that would literally laugh at me for wearing Crocs, and then it, it became a wave. Right. I swear to you. That's funny. Well, okay, that's that. Uh, you want to hit them with the rest of the social media stuff and then we can get out of here? Yeah, so everything is Antoine J. Dean. Oh, that's on Instagram, YouTube. I mean, that's all I'm really at. I mean, it's I got a, I got a TikTok. It's, on, it's Antoine J. Dean on there too. Oh, you on TikTok? You on TikTok? Barely. Yeah, barely. You be doing the dances up in there? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> all I right, don't. last thing before we go. Yeah. What is, uh, what would you tell your 16-year-old self? I love that question. Uh, 
what I would tell my 16 year old self, I would tell myself not to worry um, as long as you have the worth ethic and you're making a great effort that you're going to make it. Like I would tell myself that like, you'll be fine. You're going to make it. Give it time. You're young. Don't try to skip steps um, and really just just stick to it. I mean, that's all I really, I mean, I, I know that's basic in the common, but it's literally like if I could, I'm literally thinking of trying to think of visualize my 16 year old self hustling, just wanting to figure out like how I'm going to be successful. Just like, just believe in yourself. Uh, yeah. Just believe in yourself. Be careful who you listen to. Um, Cause you can, you could talk to somebody who's really well-intentioned and mm-hmm. knows what they're talking about in that field, but they don't know you. Like there's someone who told me that I should be appraiser and not a real estate agent, but then they later told me they were they they're, they're happy that I didn't follow their instruction because they didn't realize how entrepreneur or driven I was. Mm. So it's like you have to know you above all, and I think really being self aware of who you are and really learning how to play to your strengths and believing in yourself because it's like there's a lot of things that like I was say I I feel like define the odds in, but it's like me believing in me regardless of what anyone else said. Just, yeah, believing in yourself, for real, for real. I feel it. I feel it. All right, we out. Hit that follow button. Hit that subscribe button. Download that thing. Share it to your friends. Do all them fancy things. I don't know all the buttons. Like, I'm yeah, still like, new to this podcast. Share, comment. <laughs> all right, y'all. We out. <laughs> we out.